and we are live what's up everyone we are back with another edition of respect the craft podcast this is episode number eight and i'm live with again i'm gonna call him so many names tonight but for right now we're gonna call him <laughs> theo as it's steve monster mac what's up theo how's it going chilling chilling how you doing ray i'm good i'm good i'm i'm ecstatic right now because again not only am i getting to talk to you again i'm gonna call you legend all night i know you're gonna tell me to stop <laughs> to a legend like you but also it's it's a celebration night it's a big night here because we're talking not only we're talking the huge card happening this saturday but we're gonna go through some some memory lane here like i said i have some surprises if you guys been seeing the post i i tried to make sure i had some good surprises for theo mac tonight so I'm, it's gonna be a I'm fun all time. about it i know you've got some good stuff right Awesome. I'm actually I feel a little funny because I had some dental work as I was telling you uh, yeah. this, right literally in, uh, two hours before the show and this is all still very known yeah. <laughs> and I feel like uh, you know when I have my Bell's palsy attack <laughs> so if I Jim Ross a few things I'm sorry <laughs> no it's all good it's all good as long as you're all good that's it that's all that matters I'm good so I'm good so it's awesome it's awesome Okay, so uh, first thing I wanted to talk, because again, it's 25 years, I wanted to talk a little bit about one of the first times I actually got to see you live. Because again, I grew up watching that JPW era, I got to see a lot of the stuff you guys were doing, but one of the first times I got to see you live was actually facing two guys that I call some of my best friends right now, and it was this match right here. Ah, so those two, you. I'm very proud of those two right now, especially yeah. Cassidy, after last yeah. night. Oof. It's funny. I wanted. To, I was gonna download a clip because Keith threw him last night. But uh, during that match, you guys gave him a. Uh, uh, maybe he hit the ropes. When we threw him. Yeah, well, he hit the ropes when we threw him. But I think the AEW ring might be a little bit bigger than the House of Glory ring. <laughs> but okay, so, it's all good. It's all good. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny because uh, you know I've been watching Cassidy over the last few weeks. Yeah. Uh, he's been having a lot of great matches where he's, you know, making the guys that he's in there look great. And I really think, you know, because in that match that we had with him, I mean, to me, he was just, I think he was 18. I don't even think he was 18. He might have been 17. But, you know, um, he's very young and uh, still still learning the business. And, um, you know, to see him now, you could tell he's definitely comfortable being in the ring, comfortable being himself. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I think he needs now a good feud. I was going to say against Sammy Guevara, but I guess they kind of did that a little bit. Um, but it's coming along those lines to, um, you know, elevate him and make him feel even more confident in himself. You know, that way when him and Quinn start teaming up, I I, I feel like they keep teasing that they're going to bring in Jeff uh, to team up with Matt against them and stuff. So uh, that should be good. But, uh, you know, I want to see them do more stuff with guys like Santana Ortiz and Red Dragon, the Hard, um, the Hardys, the Young Bucks, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, yeah. And just show their skill more because in that match that we had, me and Moff, I don't think anybody expected that match to be the way that it was. And that's one of my favorite matches in the last 10 years that I've had, you know? And yeah. it was good to have people come up to me in the back and be like, yo, I'm sorry I slept on you because it meant a lot to me, you know? Everyone, yeah. I always feel like everybody's been sleeping on me my whole career. So to have that, you know, come out of that, it means a lot. And then they got elevated. Like, because from that match on, they've just been stacking and stacking and stacking. And the next yeah. thing you know, they're signed with EW. So you know, yeah. I feel like that was a good point for them, too. No, definitely. That definitely was one of those, like, I remember seeing that. And from there, you could just see that rise. Like, it just happened naturally, like, from there. And again, especially facing you and, and Mac and, and Moff, it was like, it just started something there. It got them that mm -hmm. fire that they definitely needed. And again, you guys might have also uh, humbled them a little bit there with uh, with a lot of the chops and lariats and all. That. So, well, you know, that's something that's uh, kind of like the hit squad's calling card is uh, yeah. you know test you out and see if yeah. you're ready for the big time. And you know, there've been a lot of guys before them that have you know been tested and passed and went on to bigger and better things. And then there've been a few guys that didn't make it and they. Fell off into obscurity somewhere, you know what I mean? So Definitely. that's kind of like been me and Moss role the last 20 years. Yeah. Speaking of which, again, like I said, I have some surprises here. 
And something mm-hmm. I wanted to bring up, like you said, you guys did that for a lot of teams. One especially being the American Death Machines back in the day at JPW. So one of my mm-hmm. favorite promos is this one right here. I'm going to play a little bit of it and so everyone can see why this is one of my favorites from back in the day. Got your promo! I want to know! Finish! Who the fuck is your fucking promo? Sammy Callahan! You! Chris Dickinson! Holy shit! Who the fuck are you, Chris Dickinson? You shit! You think you're the man? You ain't shit, homeboy! I tell you right now! (laughs) Whoops, there we go. Um That, that promo was a little crazy to say the least. And and I always get people are like, yo, he's so fat that he fell out during the promo. No, what happened was I took a Balls Mahoney chair shot, and yeah, it was it was a pretty stiff one too. And yeah. um, and the I was selling the chair shot like I was yeah. so hyped up, but then it, like the concussion came back. It was like, hey, remember me? You yeah. know, but it is what it is. But yeah, that that was a good that whole nonsense piece of work was really good, and it was last minute too because you know uh, me and Moth weren't supposed to be teaming up. It was supposed to be me and Havoc. Who yeah. passed away. Rest in peace, Havoc. Um, but, uh, he had some outside issues that he couldn't make it and, um, Moff subbed in for him and, uh, we were able to make some good stuff with Dickinson and Callahan and, um, you know, just trying to add that next level of excitement and, uh, showing that emotion and how pissed off I was that, you know, they cost me the tag belts. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, no, definitely. And it's one, like, even when I was talking to a few people about, doing this and like how this episode was going to be it's like you have to play the promo because this is one we've shared so many times especially between like uh the group and it's like it's it's just so much emotion there that again that's what you want out of a promo and again this is so it's something that still lives on it's something especially if you're in getting into this business keep watching that promo see that natural emotion there that again even with the condition like you're saying you had gotten gotten your, your bell rung a little bit but it still mm-hmm. was enough that it's like it's selling that it's selling that food yeah. there. So that's and awesome. then you know it's funny because you said the promo. Whenever anybody says the promo, all that ever comes into my mind is the Teddy Hart promo after uh, Strong South Thugs beat him up. And uh, yeah, I've had literally tens, dozens of people quote that promo to me, line for line, everything from Teddy's part to my part. So like. I've been very fortunate that I've been able to be a part of in-ring action outside of the ring, um, you know, just all kinds of different aspects of this business. I've been a part of stuff that people remember. Yep. And so, like, when you said the promo, all I saw was Teddy R. Oh, my side. <laughs> I see you do the move a million times. You know, like, stuff like that is, you know, I've yep. been very fortunate in my career to have stuff like that happen. Definitely. I know. It's, again, it, and I feel like that's the best thing because it's also – Again, we're 25 years down the line as well, and it's still being relived to this day. Like, mm-hmm. Again, it's crazy to see. Those are the moments that's like, it's great to see. It still lives on, and it continues, and it will continue too. Because again, our generation now, especially the ones that are, it's like everyone's like, oh, I remember this. I gotta share it around now. Because now everything's mm-hmm. online. Now everything's like it's shared in minutes. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. everything's out there. <laughs> Oh, that's always a great thing. I, I always talk about the fact that when me, Moff, Key, Homicide, we were really doing our growing up in the business, there was no YouTube. So we got word of mouth through tape traders or just fans on message boards. Um, but there was no actual video proof of what we did. So, you know, as you know, YouTube, not even YouTube, as like the torrent sites and like Kazaa and file sharing started to blow up. That's how we started to get out there and clips of us started to get out there. And it's kind of crazy because like, you know, I was talking the other day, like someone said that the wall throw was the, like one of the first viral indie wrestling clips ever. And like, to me, that's just like, how? Like, but then when I think back, I'm like, oh yeah, because the internet really wasn't the internet. You know, it was yeah. just totally something else and um you, know, you forget how easy you have it when you have youtube where you can stream literally live within seconds of it happening you know and um, yeah. it's it's definitely a different way of promoting yourself and getting your name out there as opposed yeah. to us that you know we had to do it the hard way you know 
the old school way. <laughs> yeah. No, definitely. Like it's something like even when I spoke with uh with another unk with Deshaun Pratt that we're talking about, now it's not the tape trades anymore. There's not line wire that's killing our computers. Now it's like in minutes. Like even right now we're on we're on four different platforms at once. Just from mm-hmm. push of a button. Like it's it's how the, the times have definitely evolved here. So it's definitely Pretty great crazy. for the business as well. Yeah. Definitely. Mm-hmm. But um, okay, so I have to ask because, of course, it's something that I try to make sure everyone uh, we ask everyone here. What does the craft mean to you, Theo? Twenty five years down the line, what is it as a represented for you? So for me, professional wrestling is art. Professional wrestling is the ability to tell a story, to get those people to come and see you, but then once they see you, that they want to see more of you that you entertain them so well that they tell their friends, man, I saw this and like, I've had it happen a lot of times where people are like, you know, that other stuff, I watch it and it's kind of fake, but the stuff that I saw you do, there's no way you could fake that, you know? And when I see, when I hear that, that makes me feel good that I'm doing the job right. And on top of that, it's, you know, showing the youngsters coming up, how to do the business properly because as long as you're doing that then the business is going to be in a good place but if you stay doing just for self you know then it's not you know it's always going to be in a you know downward spiral and you don't want that to happen i know i don't because i'm closer to retirement than ever and i just want to be able to watch wrestling and enjoy it you know when i'm sitting at home you know um which is funny because most of my career, I really, I was like, oh, I don't want to watch. This is such garbage. You know, but there would be a lot of, I mean, coming up, there's a lot of garbage on the indies. Yeah. You know, now everyone, you know, really take took it to another level with being great athletes and great, you know, talents minded, you know, um, just like someone like an Anthony Gangone. Anthony Gangone, he can tell a great story he can get you invested into something other than himself by him telling it, you know, and to me, that's the part, you know, it's, it it is a business. You have to sell certain aspects of it, but when you can do it naturally where you're not selling it, they're just buying it no matter what, then you're doing an awesome job, you know, and I feel like, you know, that's the thing. It's, it's a fight. It's supposed to be a fight. Anyone who's afraid of the word fight needs to get out of the business. Um, like, you know, I, I say it all the time. I'm all for inclusion. I, everyone could do this. I don't care. You're gay, straight, black, white, yellow, orange. I'm all for it. But if you're just doing it because you're gay, gay straight, black, white, whatever it is, then get out. You have no space in this business. This is for people who take this serious because the risk that is involved with this even though it's a work and even though it's, you know, scripted or whatever it is, entertainment, every time you step in the ring, there's a chance that you could die. As crazy as it sounds, why would you do it? Because I love it. But when you understand that risk, then you treat this business properly. A lot of people don't understand that risk. So when they don't understand it, they're just careless and reckless and oh, I could do whatever I don't, whatever. And then what happens is they're not the one to get hurt. It's someone else, someone else who does have the potential, you know, to make a lot of money or make a change in the business. And what happens then? You know what I mean? You know, especially with all the kids who now use professional wrestling to enhance their, you know, social media status. There's a lot of those kids who are just looking for that quick, instant Kardashian fame. Yeah. You know, this is kind of the wrong business to do that, though. You know what I mean? No, yeah, that, uh, yeah. Which, again, I it, it's... It sucks because out of those that kind of group, there's always going to be that one that definitely has that love and respect for it, mm-hmm. and it just it starts getting clouded around because it's like, okay, so who's in it for the right reasons? And again, could be a part of something like that that it's like, it's the risk of are they going to get injured facing one of these guys is just looking for what's going to go viral. Like, mm-hmm. Yep, exactly. Exactly. And listen. Coming from me, that might sound hypocritical because I'm famous for throwing people into a wall. But in those days, even though, you know, one guy did get hurt really bad and it was a pure accident, 
it wasn't anything you know malicious or whatever it was just an accident no. you know but i took every precaution that i could it wasn't just hey i'm just gonna throw you have no say i would always make sure do you want to do this are you sure you want to do this and then this is what you got to do you know yeah. and let them know how to protect themselves and what to do and what not to do and uh, even before we would do the spot during the match are you sure you want to do it yeah let's go okay you know what i mean yeah no and, and i was gonna say too you could see it like at least there's that common ground of like okay this is flowing and it looks amazing because mm-hmm. you could think someone that tries it because again we're in that generation now everyone's trying to replicate some things you guys did you would be able to tell like oh they're just doing it for the cloud instead mm-hmm. of doing it for hey let's make this still safe someone's going to get hurt trying to replicate this. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, look at all the bumps these guys are taking on the outside, on outside of the ropes on the apron. And now that doesn't, there is no give to that. And, you know, they say it for a reason, you know, and everybody's pushing it this close with the neck bumps. You know, every time they take one of those destroyers on the apron or to the floor or something like that, you know, it's going to get to a point. I've seen people get paralyzed. You know, I, there was a guy, he took, uh, it was a pile driver, and he got paralyzed. He got carted out, you know, and that's not a cool feeling to watch. You know, that's something that is very scary. And then, on top of that, not only might you not be able to walk again, then you have mounting hospital bills, and, you know, the insurance for the wrestling goes up. So, it's like, you know, if you're not taking this serious, and you're just doing it just to be a part of something, to be one of the cool kids, or whatever it is, then you should probably leave. No, definitely. And it is something like when I've seen those bumps, the first thing I do is just I try to hold my neck because I'm like, the first thing you think is either that's going to be a stinger or that's, it's, it's just, it's it's not even good to see. Like, I don't, I get it. It's for the reaction, but it's like, it, it's just, I don't get it sometimes. But yeah, Well, and the thing is like, look at the bump Sting took. Sting oh. just took a buckle bomb, which, I mean, when you really think about it, it is quite dangerous, but... Seth Rollins had been doing it for a while. Yeah. To guys bigger than Sting, he was doing it safe. Just one inch just caused his neck to snap. You know what I mean? And he's pretty much done for a few years when he really should have had a longer run. Yeah. You know, all that money missed, all that time missed. For what? You know? Yeah. Um, but again, like I said, if it comes off as hypocritical, uh, you know, I'm not trying to be hypocritical. I'm coming from experience. 25 years you've seen and done a lot of things where you could see like oh well that's not safe or that's not good or that's not yeah. you know worth it you know it's all about what's worth the risk of you doing it you know yeah. and certain things that really you know w- the problem is there's no one to police wrestlers wrestlers just go you know yeah. if there was somebody you know to hey don't do this or don't do that or this is why Maybe you know things would be different, but there's no one. It's it's the independence. It really is a yep. free spirited living thing. You could do whatever you want to do, whatever you want to do to make art, and that's going to be always the go to. Like, well, you can't tell me what to do because you did what you wanted to do, and I'm doing what I want to do, and this is how I see it, and this is how you see it, and that's it. You know. Yep. But at the same time, you still have to respect human life. <laughs> you know, you have to respect the fact that someone's there giving their body. So that you could look good and telling this fake story that you created there has to be that line you know and a lot of the times it's getting blurred now because so many people are like nah we could do this you know 450 styles clash off the top rope onto a pit of needles and it's like yeah. I'm, good. I'm good i don't need to do all that you know no again it, th- this is one of those that definitely less is more with those kind of things. But again, mm-hmm. to show you guys, because again, we've mentioned it a few times already, to show you something that was safe and got the pop, let's show a little bit of the wall. The wall? Wall. Oh, 
don't know how much more this wall can take without caving in. The hit spot has wasted you in the gorilla press position. Oh my God. Unbelievable. The Unbelievable. Wall, the wall shot. It looks like Danny Drake's gonna meet it. He's off the ropes. Wants to match. Has Danny Drake in the gorilla press position. Oh my god. Just look out. Whoa. Whoa. And there you go, guys. That Whoa. last one, that's the one that, that was the worst. And yeah. you know, um if you notice the first one, there was no padding. Yeah. The second one, there was padding. You know what yeah. I mean? Like it was chronological in those first two. The I think the third one was uh, before we put the padding, and then okay. the pad, you know. But um, you know, if you notice the first one, you could tell it was the first one that I really did because he went straight into it with his shoulder <laughs> and everything. Second one, you see them put their hands up, they push off because well, all it is really, I mean, yes, a guy is being thrown six feet away, but at the same time. He's hitting that wall with his hands, you know, yeah. and when he does, it makes a loud thump. It sounds like the worst car crash, but then you add to that, that because he's pushing, it's making his body go down and his legs hit the wall so that he could come down and land on his feet rather than land on the side of his body on the floor, you know, seven feet under. But, you know, there's, there's things that we would do and try to tell them, you know, and we always tried to do our best to make sure everybody was okay. You know? Yeah. No, definitely. And again, that's that's right there. You could see it. You could see how that was something that, again, everyone could say what it what it was. It's as crazy as it looks, but you guys at least made it so the person taking it as well felt safe enough, and they agreed to wanting to take something like that. And like I said, I would always ask, and like yeah. I think there's maybe one or two guys. I know that there's one guy, Trent Beretta, that yeah. he said that he wanted to do it but he really didn't want to do it you know what i mean like but we did it and you know things happened and you know everything changed you know um but at the time you know wrestling was a lot different too yep. wrestling really was you know the wild west back then and it was you had to do what you had to do to get over and like i said we were young was, you know different time would i do it now not really i mean you've seen me at shows i'll tease it because it's fun to tease if people remember, if they're calling yeah. for it, yeah, I'll tease it. But for the most part, I am definitely not trying to throw anybody into walls right now. Um, you know, it just, it just something that's not needed, you know? Yeah. Not gonna lie, at the last show we were at, at, uh, at Catalyst, I was like, there's a perfect clear wall right there. <laughs> now that there's the also a commission that, that I'm like, <laughs> ah. <laughs> You're not the only one who said it, trust me. There's a few people that were like, Are you gonna throw him into the wall today? I was like, oh, no. <laughs> it, it was a perfect was Lance, distance. If too. it was Lance and he was healthy, Lance Lude, yeah. if he was healthy, I might have thought about it. But uh, probably what I'd rather do is have people catch him. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh last time Moff and I did the ball throw, we did it to Key, and we had a bunch of guys catch him. You know, and Key yeah. could handle himself, he knows how to control his body, but yeah. You know, um, we had guys catch them just because it was, it was safer that way. You know what I mean? It was a cool visual, too, you know, but you know, just a lot safer to have guys catch and no, make definitely. it look like, you know? Yeah. It's, and, and even then, it's still like, I, I remember seeing that match. It's still an insane visual because, again, you're, you're launching another guy <laughs> in midair. Like, it's still, mm -hmm. it's still insane to see. Like, no matter yeah. to the wall, to the ring, to, a whole group of guys it still looks and it's amazing actually i just remembered the last one that we did uh it ended up being botched because uh we were doing it to mjf and okay. um uh as we were running um i tripped on the uh canvas and i started to fall so instead of him going out he grabbed onto the rope thankfully he did and he went over like he was going to skin the cat and then fell down but um because i tripped uh, i think my knee like i was running and i just hit boss leg a little bit like i just bumped it a little and made me trip on the canvas and 
day. He almost died that day. So from that point on, I was like, yeah, no, we're good. We don't need to do it anymore. I guess that was the sign of like, okay, it's it's time to put the wall down. Yeah. Or at least the, the launching <laughs> of the wall down. Yeah, yeah. So, there you go. I mean, if someone else wants to do it, as long as they take all the precautions in the world, then sure, yeah. why not? You know, but there's no, I mean, so the, the guys wrestling, guys and girls wrestling now are such great athletes yeah. today that there's no need for it. You know, back then, me and Moff we were bully thugs. You know, we were bigger than most of the guys wrestling with us. And that just gave us an extra added advantage as far as what our characters were. But if we were like homicide and, you know, small like that and could wrestle, we wouldn't need to do it. You know, we do other okay. stuff. Gotcha, you, gotcha. You. No, definitely. But even again, like I said, to me, that was always a pop to see watching those clips back. It's always, it's always fun. It's always something that, again, mm -hmm. it's part of that history. It's again, it's 25 yeah. years and it's still amazing to see and still talk about here. Pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah. But also another, again, I had some surprises here. These are some people that were also touched by your career and what you've done. So here's the first message from. Mac, I just want to say congratulations on 25 years of whooping ass in the ring. And I want to say thank you for always being an OG I can come to for guidance. And all this advice you give me over these years has really helped me grow. So thank you. Here's to many more years. There you go. First up, Aaron Ash. He's definitely been one of those guys that I've seen like under your wing now. So it's always great. He's definitely someone that if they were ever to reform the hit squad with new guys, he would be yeah. one of them. You know, um, but he's great by himself. You know, I, uh, I see so much potential in him. And uh, every time I can talk to him, I'm letting him know my thoughts on stuff that he can do to, you know, stand out more or just you know, make a bigger impact. Because I really do believe that if given the opportunity, he can do a lot of great things. I mean, he's just ridiculously jacked right now, too. Like, uh, if you see him work out, he's yeah. pulling up numbers. And I'm just like, damn, son, he's an animal. You know what I mean? So, you know, I really will always continue to support Aaron Ash and he's the nephew because, you know, uh, it just, he's someone that I see a lot of myself in when I was his age. So definitely, definitely. And also it was a great pairing. Like I remember when, uh, Matt and Ash were talking about the, the six man tag you guys were going to be in. And I was like, Oh, that's going to be just the image right there. It's like, it's, it's a modern day twist to the hit squad. And again, mm -hmm. I encourage you guys, definitely go check out that match of Team Mac versus Team Loke because seeing them, and again, Ash is a beast. Again, I can't say more about this guy because it's just, and like you said, what he's, what he's lifting, he's already jacked and huge, but he's still getting even bigger. And just, yep. I just saw what he did over the weekend at CZW, and I'm like, and he's still so young in his career. Mm -hmm. That's scary because you know. That's why I like him. I like him and I like Boom, Boom Harden, yeah. because they both are very hungry. They yeah. both work out together. They keep each other in check. And in wrestling, you need that. You always need that one person there to keep you in line, make sure you're doing what you got to do, make sure you're avoiding what you need to avoid. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they have each other's back. And uh, ever since the unfortunate passing of uh, DK, um, you know, I, I feel like they've gotten tighter, you know, and – kept accountability for each other more than ever. You know, um, that was a big loss for them. And, you know, um, I feel like that's kind of like the wake-up call, for, you know, hey, man, life is short. Let's If we're going to do this, let's do this the right way. And they've been doing it the right way ever since. No, definitely. And you can see that motivation there. That's what I always love about how in wrestling, especially when you're around good people like that, you start forming that brotherhood that they do mm -hmm. it keeps you it keeps you like oh we're doing this together like i'm gonna help make sure you're keeping going you're i'm gonna keep going and we're gonna do it we're both gonna make it yeah. that's always great to see yeah, so, yeah it's, awesome. it's really good to see and i'm glad that you know they are still able to have that spot with the czw school uh yeah. remaining open you know um i know that a lot of people always want to shut things down because they hate dj hyde and Listen, DJ Hyde isn't a perfect person, but he's been providing a place for a lot of young talent to make a name for themselves for a long time. And, you know, yeah, you could always get someone else to be the face of the company, but you got to be real. He's the one that's been giving them the opportunity, you know, and 
whenever you want to shut down, you know, somebody, you got to remember that there's a lot of other people that are being affected by yeah. what's being shut down, you know, and I'm not saying I'm not giving him a pass. If he screwed up, he screwed up. Just like if I screwed up, I screwed up, you know, but he's still giving a lot of people a chance, you know, and a lot of people, they can't afford to go to another place or there's no place that's close enough or whatever the reason is, and they choose that place. Now, if they're choosing that place and they're sticking with it, you should think before you speak. This is for a lot of people, you know. Um, it was very it was very easy for a lot of people to, you know, call people out during the speaking out movement. Yeah, there's a lot of scumbags in wrestling. That's not a secret. That's been the case for since before we were born. Yep. You know what I mean? You go back to the 1900s, they had to have shooters guys who could legit fight because there were guys who didn't want to do business the right way. There were guys who were famous that have always been into, you know, the teenage girls or boys that way. You know, that's just something that's been around since before. There's nothing we could really do other than keep the people that we are around in check. Yeah. You know what I mean? If I'm your friend and we're a tag team and I see you doing drugs, I'm going to let you know, hey, stop doing drugs. You know, you should really... Focus on if you need help, I can help you do whatever. You know what I mean? That's how it should be. Yeah. You know. Uh, but if I don't know you and you know you're doing, I'm not going to sit there and say, "Hey, you're a scumbag because you touched someone." I don't know your story, and I'm not. I don't care. Whatever. You know what I mean? Or like, you know, just uh, whatever it is. It just people really need to think before they start going hard. You know, okay. especially if they're not the person that got you know whatever it was by another person. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, definitely. No, I feel like that definitely was the case. There's going to be a lot of people. See, Max is a defender. He's, he's defending all these assholes. Well, no. Listen, I liked Joey Ryan before I knew how much of a scumbag he was. He's yeah. a scumbag. I don't talk to him anymore. You know what I'm saying? No. No, I got you. And definitely it's one of those cases, like, it, it was even proven during that. A lot of the guy, people that were talking straight to cancel someone, few of them came out to not be the nicest people either. So it's again, before you point your sword, check yourself as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's definitely yeah. one of the biggest. But or you should you should point your chancla because again we're gonna point we're gonna play another video here because we got another one of your nephews that wanted to send some love. So here we go. Your congratulations, Steve Mack, on twenty five years in the business. You know, what can I say? For these 25 years you have been in the business, I've known of you for the beginning half of it. Now, for the past six years, I've had the honor and the privilege to be under your learning tree. Not only to talk about, you know, the wrestling business, you giving me feedback on my work and my character, but also talking about other things that life throws at us, like video games and everything. Um, it's been an honor. It really has truly been. And I can, I can only hope for... More interactions, more time hanging out with you, you know, throwing ideas and, you know, you giving them back to me as, hey, how about you try this instead of doing like this? Like, that's the best thing I can say. As I like to call you, Theo Mac, as a lot of us do, because that's out of respect, because we know you're very wise when it comes to, you know, what we love. And we can tell that you're devoted and you love it and it's your passion, because you still are doing it for 25 years plus. So again... From your favorite, hopefully your favorite, awesome, chancla wielding, coquito dealing, badass, <laughs> Matt Awesome. Much love, Theo Mac, and congratulations. There That's you pretty go. dope. Yeah. You're. Uh, I like I like Maddie a lot because uh, he's definitely one of the guys that had the doghouse been around still, he would have been all up in there and he would have been one of our guys, you know. Uh, He's very creative. He takes the most of what he's given and makes, you know, the most out of it. And, um, you know, I, I appreciate that hustle. And, you know, there's not a lot of guys who do that, you know, and he's a lot of fun to be around too. He's definitely, you know, one of those guys that when you're having a down day, it's hard to be down around him. You know what I mean? He always no, brings up the room and that's someone that I always, you know, enjoy having around for sure. No, definitely. Matt's definitely one of those guys that it's not his his gimmick is all fun and games, but it's like he's also that's that's him too. It's that fun. It's that tenacity of like 
hey, why it's having a good time with being around. It's always great to have him around. He's one of those hermanos that we definitely yeah. once. It's always a, a convo. It's always a fun time. And when I was coming up with doing this, I was like, I got to hit him up. Because every time we talk, we're like, oh, Theo Max said this. We're doing this. Like, it's always great. So That's awesome. Oh, there we go. Hey, there you go. It's, it's the coin name right there. He picked it perfectly. He knew that word was just really? always going to come back. Awesome was always going to be around. So, <laughs> there <That's you> awesome. <laughs> go. perfect, perfect. Let's keep it going here. And let's start talking this card because we have a lot to talk about coming this Saturday because it's going to be a big one. Again, they're celebrating you, and you can see your influence on this card a lot. Like, there's a lot of influence. So, let's start talking about Monster Among Men happening this Saturday at the Adrenaline Sports Academy. You guys are going to want to be there because this show is, I'm telling you, it was so great to be able to talk about it, which, again, if you guys haven't checked it out, go here as well, my breakdown on it, because I tried to talk as much as possible about this card because as I saw it getting announced by Titan, I was like, this is just getting better and better. And it gave me that old those vibes of JPW days. And then with the card that's, that's around it, it's like it really feels like it. So I can't wait to talk about well, this. I know that, you know, for Charlie and Billy, yeah. uh, the old uh, owner of Titan, uh, the founder of Titan, I guess, and the yeah. current owner of Titan, uh, they were huge JPW fans. Yeah. Um, I remember I met Billy back in 2000 or 2001 because he was around JP, you know, yeah. and um, it's cool that because JP is such a big part of my life that with this show, even though they're celebrating me, I feel like I'm celebrating JP. You know, there's a lot of guys that I met at JP or that wanted to be at JP while I was there. And, you know, I'm getting a chance to hook them up. Um, but, you know, it really comes down to something that I always preach. I always try to give all the younger talent who are hungry and who – are good enough to make it, you know, take them and bring them to the next level. And for me, that's what this show is really about. It's about taking that talent, elevating them, and then elevating Titan. So that way Titan could be the place like JAP was for me to these guys, you know, um, since the closing of JAP, it really hasn't been the same for me. Um, JAP was family, you know, uh, between Modtron, the guys who filmed in the back, Mark Clemson, the guys you know that commentated, uh, the 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 office of JAP, and you know the guys who were helping out, it's like it really was a family, and without that, it's kind of been missing up until you know Titan started, and it happened a little bit before Titan when you know the guys at Titan were part of SWF, you know you could tell that they really, you know, cared about the guys that were working for them. And um, when Titan started, you know, they took the guys that they knew that were like family members and, you know, we all worked together to make Titan into something. And I, I've been saying it for the last year. Titan is a place where you don't go when you're starting out. Titan is a place that when you're a rookie who has spent the last three to five years learning what you need to learn. When you're ready to become an indie guy, you go to Titan. You know, it's the next step up. And then that's the place where the guys, the super indies, look at so that they can get their talent, you know. Ooh, and okay. when you look at, like, guys like Rick Recon and Nikos Ricos, you know, uh, Ray Kalitri, um, there's so many guys there who are on that cusp of becoming indie names that, you know, and they've all been doing their best work. At Titan, you know, um, you know, someone like a Blaze Haram, who is known where he works, but outside isn't as known. But if you give him the opportunity to shine, he's gonna get over. I like, I'm such a huge fan of Blaze because he doesn't. It's not that he doesn't care. He is willing to put himself out there in a way to get booed. You know what I mean? That a lot of people are afraid to do, and. I think he needs, you know, every time he has a promo, he'll he'll tell you, I'm always like cut. 
And he's like, oh, well, what happened? And I give him ideas. Like, oh, okay. I didn't think of it that way. I'm like, yeah, dude, trust me. He redoes the promo and it ends up being a banger. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so like, I'm always trying to help out that way, you know, and that's how it's always been with Titan from day one for me, you know, my days of being, uh, you know, anything it's coming to an end. You know, I'm not saying it's going to end tomorrow. I'm not saying it's going to end next month, but I'm just saying, I see the light. I feel the light at the end of the tunnel mm -hmm. a lot more than, you know, I did last year. And I know that for me, the transition to being in the back, it's just natural, but you know, I'm trying to make it as easy as possible for me because I am going to miss wrestling. Wrestling is awesome. I love being physical. I love doing all this stuff. I came from a athletic background, even though I'm, you know, <laughs> stay puff marshmallow, man, the, the Hispanic version, but you know, I love wrestling and yeah. I love the physical activity. When I was in high school, I played baseball, basketball, football. I played tennis. I played soccer. I played everything that you could think of. I used to ride my bike, you know, 12 hours a day, no problem. You know, um, I was always doing stuff, you know, and getting into wrestling, I always felt that brotherhood that was there with, you know, team sports. And Definitely. that's something that I feel with Titan, the guys in the back, yeah. you know, yeah. there's been a big thing with SWF and, you know, the old owner, you know, and all this other stuff, none of that matters. Cause at the end of the day, it's wrestling. I can still be boys with a TJ Marconi and an Astro Morales, you know, they're still boys with me. We shout each other out. We say, what's up? It's no contracts. It's independent wrestling. No one yeah. cares. If Rob Fury hit me up today, I talked to Rob Fury. I don't care. You know what I mean? I was always straight up with Rob. You know, Rob never did me wrong. You know, he always was straight up with me. The same way I talked to Rob, same way I talked to Billy. And it's happened before. I had to talk to both of them about some stuff. You know, but I'm not afraid to. But I'm in a different place. So for me, it's different. But, you know, I want it to be. I want people to understand, like, it is the Indies. But at the same time, when you have a place like Titan that you could call home, you do your best there and you make sure that everyone gets a chance to see it. Yeah. For me, that's what I'm doing. I want to make sure that everyone sees all the eyes are focused on Titan because this show easily is the best show that Titan on paper has put out before a show. Yeah. I can't think of anything that's come close to touching it. Every match, there isn't a match where you're like, oh, that's a bathroom break. You know, nothing, nothing. Yeah. You know, and as long as COVID doesn't mess us up, we good. <laughs> yeah. No, definitely. And I said it, especially on that on that indie perspective, I was saying this card, it's one of those things that, again, on the indies, you hear it so much like, oh, this card is all made of ma caliber matches. I meant it when I saw this card. Because, again, you feel it. You can see how structured mm -hmm. it was and how great it looks. It's going to be something that, again, let's get into it because we, we got to promote mm -hmm. this card here. We got to talk about how good it's going to be. Yes. But also, we got some <laughs> comments in the chat. Uh, Matt Awesome says, Steel Mac, what's up? Sorry, Matt, sure. we already played the video because we're trying to get everything out there. Again, we got some other sure. surprises for Steel too, so we had to make sure he sees everything. So, again, thank you for the video, Matt. Well, let's get into it. Match number one right here. Let's talk about that pure rules match. Again, I love this idea here. I love having pure rules be a factor again in pro wrestling because it's one of the reasons why I even I started this podcast here with Respect the Craft. Because it's that that back to basics almost style of like having that structure of, of wrestling there. So in seeing Preacher and Josh Adams in there, this is is going to be interesting. Preacher ain't no slouch in there. No, definitely not. Um, right now, if you ask most wrestling fans who are knowledgeable, not just about WWE and not just about AEW, but wrestling entirely, they're going to say one of the best wrestlers is the current Ring of Honor champion, Jonathan Gresham. Yep. The last 10 years, there has been, with the exception of Zack Sabre Jr., no better technical pure rules wrestler than Jonathan Gresham. Yep. Jonathan Gresham is one of my favorite wrestlers, and not just because we were cool and we talk. And When I saw Jonathan Gresham take one of my guys, Arcadia, and give him the best match ever at JP a few years ago, I right then and there I said there's nobody better than John the Gresham right now. Nobody. You know. Um, and it's not because Arcadia is a slouch, but because he made Arcadia step up yeah. and become a better version of himself. And I haven't seen Arcadia look any less than he did that night. Like yeah. I haven't seen he's gone up and up and up. And you know, 
that's all because of Gresham's influence. You know, yeah. so when it comes to pure wrestling, I'm a huge fan of pure wrestling. I can remember the days of CM Punk and Homicide going at it for the, you know, pure wrestling trophy and, you know, all that good stuff. Yeah. You know, I was there for that. I witnessed it. And last show, uh, the two year anniversary of Titan, I got a chance to witness Josh Adams wrestle. Um, him and Killian McMurphy had a great pure wrestling match, you know, um, so I know what Josh Adams brings. He's a great veteran, uh, smart and savvy. Um, but at the same time, talk about preacher preacher is, you know, very cunning. He's very, what's I, I it's hard to, it's like Bobby the brain Heenan, like how yeah. smart he was, but he was almost genius level. You know what I mean? Above everyone else. Yeah. And preachers the same way, you know, preacher for whatever you want to say about his age, he doesn't wrestle like his age. You know, and and this is going to be one of those matches where I think everyone's going to be like, at first they're going to look and they're like, ah, and then they see it and they're like, oh, okay, that's what's up, you know, and and that's if that's the worst that happens, then I think we'll be great. <laughs> no, definitely, and I feel, and that was something like again on paper you look at it, you're like, okay, it's a pure, it's a pure wrestling match, and again, I get it, maybe not, it's not everyone's cup of tea because they like that mm-hmm. that fast paced style. But trust me when I say this, and I said it on, on the indie perspective, it's one of those matches that could really steal the show. Because mm-hmm. Josh, I've seen what he, I saw what he did the last show with Killian, and I saw how, again, he's almost like flipped the switch a bit. He's starting mm-hmm. to less, lessen that almost violence character, and he's making this important. He's making that pure wrestling style important again. And I'm like, okay. With someone like Preacher, again, another vet, another very methodical guy in that ring, it's going to be great to see those two touch on, on Saturday. It's hard to say pinpoint like a definite winner because both of these guys could take this. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that's what I like to see in my wrestling matches. You don't know who's going to win. You know what I mean? Yeah. You can't tell who's going to win because it just, it, it could go either way. Yeah. And it's so much better like that. Cause you don't want predictable matches. You don't want to see something that's like, okay, yeah, we know this is going to happen. And that's it. Mm-hmm. It's like with this, it's like, Again, who can get that upper hand? Is it going to be Preacher getting that methodical, like he's going to know when to step ahead? Or again, Josh is starting to, he's getting that pure style. He's getting in that mindset. Maybe he's practicing a little more than Preacher's thinking. So again, it's it's all that and it's great to see. But again, some more, some more matches we got to talk about and cover here. So let's talk about some gold because there's a lot of gold on that night. Let's talk that women's championship. Wait, no, excuse me. The goddess champion god it's the mistake i made i made the mistake twice the women's no it's not the women's you idiot it's the goddesses championship <laughs> i feel like that's that's always going to be the thing because it's like again we know who's, who's who's competing for it but again for its proper respect there the goddess championship as it will be riley shepherd with aj pan in her corner taking on jc storm which to me this this is great to see because i've gotten to see jc grow as far as her career because i got to see her in her original training now hearing who she's training under is just showing how much she respects her craft because again training under damian adams that's a that's a step right that's you know that used to be an old tag team partner of mine damian adams he was team up in philly for 3pw uh back in the day okay and uh in someone that you know, I can remember in the spring or summer of 2015, him introducing me to his girlfriend at the time, but, you know, one of his students, Deanna Perrazzo. And, you know, she's another one that a lot of people call the best in the world, male or female or none currently. And she does that technical style. And Damien, how many of his women that he's trained have gone on to do stuff on TV? Or have contracts on TV. There's a, a lot right now, and not just like, you know, here and there. It's high profile stuff, yeah. you know. And um, he's definitely no slouch when it comes to training women. So uh, while I haven't seen as much of JC Storm, I expect a lot because of where she's coming from. Yeah. Now having said all that, Riley Shepard was uh, at AEW and performed last night, yeah. so she is coming off a super high. You know what I mean? Um, when you get called to perform for 
for the you know for TV, and you go back to Indies, she's gonna feel a little something. She's gonna be like kind of like, I'm hungry. I want more. At least I know that's what happened with me. You know, yeah. um, but I I feel like she's gonna be a little bit of. Let me show that this is my turf. I've been wrestling for Titan. I've been yeah. feuding with Vicky for the last six months, year, whatever it's been. I'm the one that's been putting in the work. Let me show you how it's done here. I feel like that's yeah. how she, her attitude is going to be with Storm. And I feel like, you know, the last two or three matches I've seen Riley in, I've heard harder hits in her match than I've heard from most of the guys throughout the whole show. You know what I mean? Ooh. And I'm talking like, you know, when you could hear that bone on bone, yeah. it's been like that. So <laughs> I have a feeling she's going to leave uh, Storm a little bruised up. But again, JC Storm is training under Damian Adams. So, you know, if she's worth any weight and salt, she's going to be give her a good fight. You know what I mean? Yeah, so definitely. there's another one where really there's no, like, definite way to answer who's yeah. going to win. Yeah. And again, I when I did the India perspective on this, I was like, I want to be a little biased towards Storm because, again, I've gotten to even be around her original training as well, and I've seen how mm -hmm. committed she is. But when I started thinking about it, again, Riley, she is great in that ring, great athlete, like you're saying, even that 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 strong style of hers. But then you add AJ Pan to the mix, that's another element right there. Again, that, that yeah, outside. That's the side for her, though. Yeah. You've definitely been bringing out that mean streak in her. Um, and I, to be honest, I'm pretty sure it was there this whole time. She just was hesitant to let it out, whereas he was just like, nah, I got you. Come this way. You know I mean? yeah. And AJ so does that with a lot of people. Right. Yeah, AJ does that with a lot of people because he's done it with guys like with Azria and Mike Law. Like he's no, he's no stranger to being like, oh, no, I see the dark side in you. That's it. They're coming over. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. So yeah. that's another one again. And it's great because a match like this, again, when it's a championship match, you don't want it to be predictable. You want to be on your feet. And this is another one. Again, like I said, main event caliber matchup right here. So you're not going to want to miss that on Saturday. And it's you're not going to want to miss any of this. So definitely take your bathroom breaks before the show starts. If there's an intermission, run. Because you're not going to want to miss it. <laughs> there you go. Well, let's keep it going here because we have another. This one I kept saying is going to be a hard-hitting one. Because we got Frankie Picard here against Ben Castle. I've been hearing what these two are saying about each other, and I'm like, okay, this is going to be a fight on Saturday. This is going to be one that I, I said, if you're coming with kids, make sure they're they're ready for what they're about to see. Is this going to be a fight? Yeah, it's definitely going to be uh, one of those where they push the limit a little bit. And yeah. you know, I actually uh, called out Frankie this week. Um I've known Frankie a long time. And Frankie yeah. is someone that I enjoy talking to. I enjoy watching him wrestle. Um, but I think with Frankie, he's at a crossroads. I feel like with Frankie, he's not sure if he wants to go up or go down. I think the complacency yeah. is starting to set. And when he's that young, that's something that's hard to get over no matter what. So yeah. you don't want to see that settle in. Um, and, you know, I told him, I you know, I said it. I don't like the picture that he has. He's smoking a cigarette. There's always a bad... Listen, people smoke pot. They smoke cigars. They smoke all kinds of stuff. No matter what, if you just put a cigarette in your mouth, you're looked at as something negative right away. And to me, that's a statement about him and how he's yeah. feeling about himself. And I feel like he needs to step it up because Ben Castle, he really hasn't made a name for himself just yet. He's yeah. still new on the scene, trying to get his footing. And he wins, uh, he elevates his position. He loses, he doesn't lose any position because he's at the starting point. You know what I mean? Frankie Picard, though, on the other hand, he needs to win this match to me. He needs to elevate his status because once you start staggering and flattering, you can only go down. Yeah. And you don't want that. He's way too talented for that to happen. You know, and uh, hopefully he steps up. I mean, either which way, I do think that this is going to be a really good match. Uh, yeah. I know that Ben has been doing his hardest to train. He's a very respectful guy. I see him all the time in the locker room, you know, and I think that he's a student who will get very far in this, you know, future as far as wrestling goes, as long as, you know, 
he stays straight and narrow and doesn't do what Frankie does. <laughs> Definitely no. And that's again, it's it's one of those things of with Frankie, it's like again, it has everything to lose. So that's a dangerous thing. When you're at that point that you're like, you're starting to see it's 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 a sink or swim situation, you're gonna be willing to do whatever it takes. And then with yep. Ben again, it's stepping up to the stage here, and it's like he has nothing to lose but everything to gain. So that's again, that's mm-hmm. another dangerous situation. So again, it really is a bust on Saturday. You're not gonna want to miss that. So mm-hmm. definitely another match to check out. This one, this one I've had my eye on because this again, it's showing like you were talking about earlier. It's that new generation stepping up to the plate, but also it's a little bit of that JP flair. And that veteran flair, as we're talking, oh, we're talking the oh wait no, flip the cards here. Where is it? Where is that matchup? Oh, one sec. So sorry about that. Trying to make sure we get everything out of the way first before. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna go back to that because I have the graphic ready. But we're gonna talk the open yeah. challenge first. Yep. So we're gonna talk hardcore the American Hardcore Championship on the line here. How how do we describe Merck? for the fans at home. Well, Merck is someone after the last show where he wrestled Low Life Louie. Yeah. Um, Low Life Louie is one of the toughest guys that I know. He may not sound like it. He may not look like it. But you can literally drive a semi-truck over Louie, and Louie will get up and say, is that all you got? Yeah. You know what I mean? Louie, he can take a shot and, you know, just laugh at you. And Merck was able to withstand, you know, all of that. They had a great match, actually. It was a really, really fun match to watch. And he did take a lot from Louis, but he was able to get up and hold on to his title, which yeah. is something that nothing to sneeze at. You know what I mean? Louis is, you know, low life Louis is a man, if you ask me. Yeah. You know, um, but you know, he's he put out this open challenge, he's feeling confident. You should feel confident after a win over Low Life Louis. You know, um, now the problem is it could be anybody. You don't yeah. know who it is, and you know, it's hard to you know, it's hard to not let your overconfidence get the best of you. You know, yeah. um, but with Merck, I think Merck is ready. You know, he's got that military training. That's re- legit, real stuff. You know, yeah. and you're ready for anything if you're in the military. Doesn't matter what branch you're in. You're always ready for anything, you know. So it's going to be kind of hard to overcome that advantage, that mindset. Um, he's definitely willing. When he won the title, he, I mean, he had an insane match with Whaling Cage, yeah. where you know he pulled out all kinds of stops, including jumping off a twenty foot ladder. You know what I mean? So there's a lot of things that you know Merck is willing to do. So it should be a good match. Definitely. And again, that's that. When you bring up the military, there, you know that's battle test. So going into a hardcore style match like this, it's going to be something that there's nothing you could do to this guy that he's probably not already just gone through a million times worse. Mm-hmm. So, and then the open challenge element, again, it's it's always the greatest thing in wrestling because it's one of those things like it's ex- expect the unexpected there. I give my opinion. I said, you never know who it could be. I was thinking maybe that notorious 187, that Hall of Famer that just went in uh, a few weeks ago. Homicide. Because again, Anything I, I started thinking about. Uh, I've got a lot of friends. You just said expect the unexpected, and I shot it out the SAT. So, you know what I mean? I got a lot of friends. <laughs> yeah. No, and that's exactly why. Because I started thinking about. It. I'm like, who could it be? Because I can imagine a lot of people are going to be there Saturday. A lot of people from those 25 years. So you never know. And I, I even said this: Merck might be that confident that he's like, "Hey, he'll take on all comers." Who says it's just one person? That goes through that that apron on Saturday. Yeah. That's like, hey, yeah. more than one person wants a shot at that, at that championship right there. So again, and my you opinion, know what the crazy part? Yeah. Honestly, I don't want to know until it happens. Like this is the one match that when they said it was an open challenge, it was like, okay, don't tell me who it is. Let me be surprised because yeah. it could be anybody. It could be Moth that shows up, or it could be my old trainer, Lathan, Tower of Torture, or it could be anybody. There's no. been a lot of guys who wrestled for Titan over the last two years. No. It could be any one of those guys. It could be somebody from JV. It could be, no. like you said, a homicide. It could be anybody. So I kind of wanted it to be a surprise to me as well because I feel like 
that's the best way to handle things. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, no, and that's the great oh, thing too, because oh, that's going to be a genuine pop for you to be able to see mm -hmm. that. So that's awesome. Exactly. Yeah. So you know, yeah. hopefully, they, I'm I'm pretty sure they got somebody good. I can't imagine that. You know, they just some bum off the street that's showing up. You know, but um, it's when they tell you that night. It's like, hey, so uh, Theo, you're you're double booked. You're going to do the yeah. open challenge too. <laughs> you're going to wrestle the open challenge, man. Oh, okay, cool. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for celebrating me and my life. <laughs> Fuck my life, right? <laughs> no, but definitely. And again, that's the greatest thing. I, I feel like I mentioned Lathan too, because again, you never know. And again, with this being that monumental night, that would be the craziest pop there, especially for those diehard fans of, mm -hmm. of the Tri-State Indies. That would be an insane sight. Again, a homicide, a math, a math. You never know. You never know who could show up. And that's one mm -hmm. of the best things to feel because again that truly is a again expect the unexpected so but now i finally have the graphics set up here we go let's talk, we mentioned them already when we started talking about this let's get into low life louis versus chris Barton. because this again it's that perfect again the the vet versus the up and comer here and it's another one that both men are hungry here like you said low life louis Coming off, again, a loss here, but always looking to prove and always looking to show why he's one of the top of the game. And then Chris Barton, I, I said this about Chris. I was saying, on this night, he can't be El Unico. He has to be the Bushwick Beast on Saturday. Because if not, if you're going in with that kind of fun mindset against Low Life Louie, you're getting demolished on Saturday. Exactly. You know, uh, Chris Barton is someone that, again – we talk about the doghouse because Barton respects the doghouse and all the guys that came from it. And if it was still around, he definitely would have been one of the guys, you know, doghouse guys. Yeah. Um, I think with Chris Barton, he wants it so bad though. He's willing to go through anything. And, yeah. you know, so that's why I said, I was like, you want to be doghouse ready, put you in there with low life Louie. If you could survive low life Louie, then, you know, now no one could ever doubt you. <laughs> that's um, that's a nice test right there, Theo. Like just like, hey, yeah. here you go. Like, here you go. <laughs> yeah, you you want it? Be careful what you ask for. Oof. You know what I mean? Uh, but low life Louie is coming off of a loss to Merck. Yeah. Um, when these two locked up at the uh, Battle Royal, uh, the Mount Olympus Rumble, uh, there was a huge pop. And Louis actually eliminated Chris Barton, which Ooh. I was surprised. I was like, oh, you know what I mean? Um, because low life Louis, you know, he has his moments where, you know, he's not 100% into what he's doing. You know, that's what happens with life. Life, you know, we could have the best thing going on and we don't appreciate it because we're so into whatever's go whatever else is bringing us down. You know, and Louis, there have been times where, you know, I've seen him at his best. I've seen him at his worst, you know. And um, but when I see him do stuff like go toe to toe with Chris Barton and then eliminate Chris Barton single handedly, like Chris Barton's a big dude, not like he's yeah. a little dude. Yeah, yeah. And we single handedly eliminated Chris Barton. You know, that was super impressive to me. Yeah. You know, and I am pretty sure it impressed the guys at Titan as well, you know, that. They saw how Louis was feeling, the reaction Louis got, and they're like, "All right, let's bring back Louis and keep on doing some work." You know, that's awesome. It, it's one of those things where, for both guys, they need the win. So it'll be interesting to see who's able to dig deeper and pull it out. Definitely, and that's again, it's going to be great to see. And like I said, seeing both of those guys, you know, that hunger is both is for the is there for not only mm -hmm. Louis but definitely for Chris. And again, it's it's the showtime for Chris. Can he can he withstand it? Can he get in there and show why he's he's that hungry and wants to prove it? But also, we got some people mm -hmm. in the chat. Uh, Bob Culture saying so much handsome on the screen. Looking forward to see you Saturday, gents. But thank you, Bob Culture. Shout out to Bob. I'm Rob. trying to get I'm trying to get out to commentary and commentator match with Rob. <laughs> um, that would be that would be a good thing to see. I've seen what, what Rob's doing, and he's another one that's definitely been studying the game. I love to see that when you have that interest and that respect for this craft of professional wrestling. That's always great. Yeah. But we he's spoke about it. I gave it to him. So, you know, yeah. he's been doing good with it since. 
That's awesome. But we spoke about Louis' match. Um, got a little thing over here. We're just going to play. I don't know what it is. Let's see. 25 years. 25 years is a long time to do anything, to be part of anything. Man, it's a lifetime. And for the past 25 years, you've done it your way. You've traveled the world, wrestled overseas, battled some living legends, and been part of some great moments. Steve, Mac, Brother Steve, I love you. I appreciate you. I thank you. Uh, we started this journey together. And for 25 years, you've done it your way. And uh, I wish you nothing but continued success. 25 more, who knows, man? Anything's possible, but hopefully you are blessed with as many more as you want. And uh, again, you know, without you, I don't think I'd still be around. Uh, your motivation years ago helped me bring helped bring me back, and I will be eternally grateful for that. So uh, I thank you, I love you, and I am honored and blessed and thankful that I am part of your 25-year anniversary show. Thank you, Titan Championship Wrestling. Thank you, Steve Mack. And there we go. That was awesome. You know, if it wasn't for Louie, none of this probably would be happening. Louis was the one that was running a company. It's not a company. He's just a bunch of guys that were going to, you know, a church that had a ring indoors. Otherwise, they'd be doing it out back, in someone's backyard, just like a lot of other guys. Um, it's called IWW Insane World Wrestling. And, you know, um, he saw how much, you know, we went to high school together and we had known each other. I mean, I can remember Louis walking around the high school with – a Jansport that had Hulkamania airbrushed on it. You know what I mean? And uh, that's how we became friends. We started talking through wrestling. And, you know, uh, Louis invited me and Loki down. Uh, he knew that we love wrestling. We, we were athletic enough to do it where we weren't going to kill each other. But, uh, you know, um, and that was pretty much, you know, the start of the insanity, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm very grateful to have Louis in my life. He's, one of my best friends, my brother, legit. Uh, you know, there's not too many more people that I love more than Louis. And I'm forever grateful and honored to have met him and spent as much time as we spent. And, you know, I, I just, I hope that, you know, when it's all said and done, that we can sit together and we can laugh about all the nonsense and enjoy and tell the greatest stories. Maybe do a podcast or two together and just tell some of the insanity we've seen together, you know. Um, but I, I love Low Life Louis and forever grateful and thankful for him and his family. Awesome, awesome. I know definitely that's something one of these days when everyone's when everyone's ready and, and free, we gotta do one of those, just tell all the stories on one of these. That would be an awesome episode right there. And it would just be me mm -hmm. just like this, like like a little kid again in the candy <laughs> store, like <laughs> like I wouldn't ask a thing, just like here you go guys, just just talk. It's recorded. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, um, when uh, a few years ago maybe about 10 15 years ago jersey all pro started out doing you know they had a podcast and they had me as one of the hosts and um when new japan teamed up with jersey all pro to do a couple of shows here uh i interviewed uh mvp and mvp i've known for a long time before that we had been yeah. friends before he was with the wwe and um so we were talking normal and he felt comfortable with me but at the same time i was like bro what was it like to have rick flair's last match at madison square garden he was oh it was so cool like it was like it, it just awesome you know what i mean like yeah. the fact that no matter how big you are you know if you're humble and you're respectful you could always have those great moments and share them and you know know that they're appreciated by so many other people yeah. you know and that's something that's always going to stick with me pro wrestling you know uh, i'm I would say that in my life, I don't feel like I was ever destined to be anything special. I don't feel like I was ever destined to do anything great. I was fortunate enough that I got into wrestling. Uh, I didn't sell drugs. I didn't do drugs, but it could have easily been the other way around, you know, um, or worse, you know, end up in jail or dead. And, you know, I, I avoided that because of pro wrestling. You know, guys like Fat Frank and Bobby Lombardi, Rest in peace to both of them who gave me a chance to be a pro wrestler and get paid and travel and 
see the world to do this stuff with my friends and you know i mean how many people know what it's like where you and your family and your best friends are all in another country doing what you love because i know what it's like i had on one tour big japan it was me homicide moff we worked for big Japan on the same tour the same week loki my cousin he's in new japan or zero it was new japan or zero one i forget which one i think it was zero one yeah but he was there and we were all on the island together and then at the same time you had the sat uh brian daniels american dragon he was another one that we were all boys you know all of your friends were all in japan we're not even in our own home country we're in the totally other side of the world you know, and i know what that's like and that's one of the coolest things that i'll always carry with me until i can't remember anything anymore because you know i know not a lot of people know what that's like and i've been very fortunate and blessed to have that you know and i'm you know i'm forever grateful to everything that pro wrestling has given me awesome no definitely and it's it's one of those things i i think that's why hearing the stories you tell and hearing what like again how much love you have for this business and still have and are willing to give for others as well it shows that you definitely it's it's appreciating all that appreciating the moments appreciating the the, the years and it's it's great to see yeah. homicide always yelled at me you're too humble you got to be selfish and i'm like i can't be selfish i don't know how to be selfish there's certain things i'd be selfish with yeah. you know but when it comes to wrestling i just it's just natural for me to teach and make people better, you know, or at least show them how to be better because, you know, that's just something, it's something that I love. And I, like I said, when I'm not doing this anymore, I want to be able to appreciate it and watch it and love it the same way that I do now, you know, same way when I was a kid you know, and there, there's only one way that happens and that's, you know, by showing them and teaching them, you know, Definitely. but also shout out to smiley in the chat. What's up, brother? Thanks for checking wow. us out here. He's another one of those the just hungry guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's well, here we go. Let's keep it going because we have another amazing matchup here. Tag titles on the line. I can imagine you have a lot to say about this one here. So let's get into it. It's Ransom, it's PJ Savage against Ross and Bradley here. PJ and Ransom, the inaugural tag team champions for TCW. And uh PJ and the takeover, they've uh They've been watching you a little, a little too much here, from what I'm seeing. Like they have some words for you. I hope PJ's he's ready for his match and not just like he's worried about you that night. Why are you so obsessed with me? <laughs> um, nah, uh, PJ Savage um, is someone who reminds me a lot of me coming up, very hungry and willing to break the mold for what's expected of him, based off looks. You know, when you see PJ, a lot of people think, oh, he's just going to be a big man and lumbering or whatever, but he's not. He's very athletic, very talented, very gifted, talks a good promo. Um, he's got a lot of the package. He just needs more experience, you know. Um, as far as, you know, him and Ransom, you know, the last few shows that I've seen them team up, they've been doing damage everywhere they go. And that's what's up. That's what it's supposed to be, you know. Um, I feel like with Ross and Bradley, you know, they're doing the same amount of damage, just in a different place. They're doing it over at H2O and other places like that. And this is like their chance to shine. You know, um, this, I feel like is going to be one of those where it's just grenades are going to be thrown all over the place. Bombs are going to be hit and it's going to be last man standing, you know, yeah. and I'll be honest. You know, I was the inaugural Titan Championship Wrestling Champion, and I loved having that belt. But then I saw the tag belts. I was like, oh, I love these belts. They look awesome. And I really wanted to have a partner that night to, you know, take on, you know, whoever was going to be the champs because I really wanted to shot at them. Um, but, uh, you know, um, PJ is starting to get his due, him and his boys. And, you know, this is, again, a stepping stone for them. You know, if they can pass this challenge, then what's next for them? Uh, and, and for Ross and Bradley, this is them coming into a newer territory um, where they can make a really big name for themselves, make a really big impact. You know, um, either which way, like I said, I think this is just going to be, you know, a tennis match where they use a hand grenade instead of a tennis ball. 
Um, yeah, I mean, this is going to be one that I said it like watching both of these teams. They're it's it's a fight. No matter how you look at it, it's going to be a fight. Ross and both mm-hmm. Ross and Bradley coming in. This is a new territory here. They're looking to make a mark. They're looking to claim some more gold because I've seen what they've done in H two O. They mm-hmm. they dominated over there under Tremont. Coming here, they're yeah. looking to make it this stage theirs. And again, PJ Savage has been talking the talk. Let's see if he goes against someone that's as equal to that ferocious there, what he can do. So this is gonna be yeah. interesting. Um, to see what's is there any way that we could pause this real quick? Oh uh, yeah, no problem. All right. We'll be right just, back. Guys. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we'll be right back. Um my and we're back into it. So we left off Sorry, on guys, a little bit uh, outside emergency, just you know, in case it's, they look it's all good. wonder. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Again, there's much to talk about, much to celebrate. So let's keep I it going it. here. Yep. Yes, sir. So the tag, like we were saying, that tag title match is going to be one you guys are not going to want to miss out because that's going to be again a fight. It's two hungry teams yeah. going at it. And like I said, I'm hoping PJ is going in with a clear mentality of who he's facing. Because if not, again, it might cost him those belts on Saturday. He's not calling me out. So if he's focused on me, Jay Bougie thinks that, you know, he's living in my head. I got a little yeah. story time for Jay Bougie later. But PJ Savage wants me so bad, he needs to focus on his tag titles or else they'll be Ross and Bradley's tag titles. You know what I'm saying? All I'm saying, though, is one more thing, too, because, again, we'll talk, talk about him on in his match, but – uh. One of your old tag partners is going to be there that night, too. So uh, they keep talking. Um, maybe KTB and you strap it up one more time. I mean, anything is possible. This is my yeah. show. I can do whatever I want. <laughs> there you go, guys. There you go. Again, I'm going to quote the SAT yeah. one more time. Expect the unexpected, guys. Expect the unexpected. Totally. <laughs> but you let's keep it going. They're not even Mexican, but I say what are they like they are. <laughs> well, hey, I feel like for the most part, probably a lot of people thought they were, especially with the name Spanish and now team. They're like, eh. yeah. yeah. At That's one point, possible. we were all possibly considered it. So. <laughs> let's keep it going because with a matchup, I'm definitely looking forward to again uh-huh. for an old JPW Mark here. I I can't wait for this. Again, when I heard this match announced, I was like, "There's no way <laughs> to see." Jay Lover back in the ring. You got, again, Uncle Magic here, but Magic stepping in that ring. And then Crazy Ivan. When I saw this, I'm like, this, again, this is this is it right here. Is This is this is the match that if Fat Frank was alive, he would definitely be front row to watch. Yeah. Uh, he loved all three of these guys. At one point, they were all champions for him, whether it was tag, Jersey State, whatever. Um and he enjoyed, like, Frank loved wrestling, but he really enjoyed wrestling that was unpredictable. He really loved the expect the unexpected. I know we keep saying that. But he was all about that life. And this match is definitely uh, one of those. I've been in the ring with all three guys. I can tell you that they're all tough. They're all uh, experienced veterans. Um, right off the bat, if you talk about magic, Magic is the reason why most of the Northeast Indies exist. There's so many guys who have been, you know, influenced or helped out or whatever by Magic that it's ridiculous. You know, um, guys like Santana Ortiz, myself and Moff, um, you know, TJ Marconi, you know, so many guys who are something today because of Magic. And, you know, the storyline is Magic is my old partner, and uh, now he's a bum and everything. But deep down inside, no matter what, I'll always respect Magic. You know, he has done so much for me in my career. And, you know, I know that for him, he lives to be in the ring, no matter what. Yeah. And if, and you know, God forbid, but, you know, if he died in the ring, he, would, he couldn't be any happier yeah. knowing Magic. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Um, Crazy Ivan is legit what he says, crazy. Um, he knows how to get a reaction no matter what, you know. And when I was uh, running the things at JP uh, towards the end, he was one of my guys that I brought in to help run the back because he didn't care who you were, where you've been, what you did. 
he wanted you to perform, he got you to perform. You know, um, yeah, I had him in charge of, you know, talent with promos because his character is just insane. He knows how to bring that out of people. And like I said, as soon as he comes out, you know nothing about him, but you know to boo him. I've never seen that with anybody else. You know what I mean? As soon as he walks out, you know, and then I've seen him where he's had the whole crowd cheer for him, you know? And so at the time, because, you know, back in the days, you could be more racist and more politically incorrect. And his gimmick was he was skinhead Ivan, the Nazi. And I've seen him make a crowd of black people cheer for him. Because he started breakdancing. So if that don't tell you anything about the band, you know what I mean? Oh. And then there's Jay Lover, who Jay Lover is someone that when I started, um, he came from that that uh, venue that I told you about where Louis ran IWW. Yep. And one of my first tests in my career was against Jay Lover and Homicide. And ever since then, um, we've always been boys, you know. Uh, the good times are bad. We always, you know, had each other's back. And Jay Lover is someone that he has been through some of the worst stuff. And I've seen him overcome it to where he's on TV, on big TV shows. You know, he's been in movies, commercials, everything you could think of. He's done everything he could to overcome his past and become a shining star. And I'm very proud of Jerry and the stuff that he's done. But he's also one of the toughest, craziest individuals that I've ever seen in the ring. There was one night, uh, Homicide and him had the feud. Like, that's the feud that'll never die, Homicide and Jay Lover. But we were in Charity Hall in Bayonne, and they're beating the crap out of each other. JP had these ring steps that were notoriously heavy. St- solid steel frame with thick wooden planks. And I'm not lying, if this set of stairs weighed less than 100 pounds you know what i mean like then you know i'm i can't even i like there's nothing i can even say that's how heavy these steps were yeah homicide picked him up walked over to jerry jay lover and just dropped him on the back of jerry's head and oh. jerry but he was still up wide awake and still kept fighting there was a, another time where we were in a battle royal and it was Moff's first battle royal, first anything in wrestling, really. So Moff was super green. And Jerry told Moff, hit me in the back with the chair. When you come in, I'll sell for you. Moff, not knowing, took the chair full blast over his head, smashed it behind Jerry's head. Jerry, if you watch the video, gets hit and his and falls, right? Was up less than a minute later you know what i mean like jerry for (laughs) we used to make fun of how big his head is we used to call him the superdome but (laughs) for as big as his head is he took a lot of punishment and he kept fighting and that's something that jerry's always been a fighter you know and like i said this match is going to be something that i know i'll enjoy the fans will enjoy but if fat frank was still alive he would enjoy you know and it's yeah. definitely the right thing to call it the JP Originals match because that's what this is. This is the true spirit of JP with those three guys. Three guys. No, definitely. And that's it's amazing to see. And like I said, as someone that grew up on that, when I heard this announcement, first just seeing magic in there was great. Like I had to, I looked up this picture because I was like, just yes. it's the moment that was great to see you guys team up there. No, you know what's so funny about that picture. Uh, so that was the first time I was ever able to wear any of my titles since my second or third year in pro wrestling. Yeah. And that, that night we lost those belts. So go for <laughs> it. <laughs> it was a sign. Never put them around your waist again. Okay. But I was, I was training hard cause I had, that was around the same time I did my first WWE shots. I think that okay. was a week after. So I was training hard to, you know, make sure I was in some sort of decent shape. So the belt fit perfect. I was like, yeah, look at it. Well, I got to give it up now. <laughs> uh, no, but that is, it's great. Like, again, even when I talked about it on the indie perspective, Magic is someone that, again, like you even said, how much he's influenced you guys and influenced so many, again, top stars right now on mainstream. The first time I met him was that anniversary show, the one that SWF put together, the uh, Mm -hmm. big anniversary and again i grew up watching magic but the fact that when i got to speak to him for a bit after the show we're all just chilling there and 
he gave me his time and to me that it was amazing because again i'll still say it doing this conversation to me it's like i i don't deserve it <laughs> like i'm still i'm still young in here i'm still that young kid still and getting a moment like that and hearing how magic talks about the business and hearing his encouraging words it's like this is a true definition of a legend right here and seeing him magic, step inside it's crazy I described magic recently as the uncle that will tell you, Hey, don't do this because blah, blah, blah. You're going to upset your mother. But then at the same time, he'll give you $20 to go to the arcade and go spend your time at the arcade. Like that's definitely magic. And he gets a lot of, you know, for who he is and what he is and what he's done. And I I definitely am grateful that we were able to have magic, you know, show us everything from the beginning until now and beyond. So Definitely. There'll never be a bad word you'll ever hear me say about magic. Yeah, definitely. And no, that 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 sentiment so true because that that night when I met him, I got to speak with him. First thing he asked me, "Are you sure you want to do this?" Mm-hmm. <laughs> when I told him, "Yeah, I'm getting into training," I even rode with Smiley that day. He's like, "You see the crazy things he does? Are you sure you want to do this?" I'm like, "Yes, sir." <laughs> I told him how much I, I respect this this business. He's like, "Okay." have any questions let me know so on a drop he's like okay you're doing it so do it mm-hmm. the right way so yeah, it's, always, exactly. it's always great to hear that where i get all of my feelings about pro wrestling how i wanted to be is all from magic because magic showed me gave me an opportunity you know 20 plus years ago at jp when they told him they wanted him to just squash me he was like no why that don't make any sense you know and he gave me an opportunity and you know i was able to take the opportunity to run and i was also take the lesson of help out the younger guys when you can yeah. you know and that's always stayed with me and that's always been how i do all of my wrestling business you know what yeah. i mean always help out the younger guys when you can because those are the ones that when you're watching this you know if they suck you're not gonna want to watch this anymore but if they're good and you have a hand in it you're gonna be proud to watch all of it that's fine definitely no, that's going to be again. This one right here, especially for those those fans that are coming in that have known that history, this is the match for you guys. This is going to be great, especially for the young ones. Watch this match because you're going to see why we're talking about magic the way we're talking about. You're going to see why they call Crazy Ivan Crazy Ivan. It's going to be again a little more, I guess, for this day and age, but I still feel like he's going to do something crazy. Like I just saw mm-hmm. when we, lo- we took our little break, uh, Jay Lover posted a picture of Crazy Ivan, and he looks crazier than ever. <laughs> so the best part is thing. Jay Lover is bringing someone that a lot of people don't know too much about, Burns Luciano, the- who is one of our boys from when you know he been training longer than me, uh, but he's one of the funniest individuals that I've ever met in my life, and you know he's someone that. I really feel like he should have gotten more burn in professional wrestling because he's a great character. And he's, trust me, when he shows up, we might get in a little bit of trouble because he's a little bit edgy, you know, he's a little bit, you know, push the envelope, but <laughs> Burns was just funny. And then there's Fufu, who is an original JP guy uh, that used to manage with Fat Frank and wrestle with Fat Frank. So there's going to be a lot of history just in that match alone. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait for this again. That's that's going to be my match right there that I'm just going to be all eyes on. Like, that's it. No one talk to me. I'm watching this. That's it. <laughs> well, let's keep it going here. This is going to be another good one here because we got – he calls himself the good guy now. Another veteran in the game so many years in this industry as well, Azrael, taking on Rocket. This one it's, – it's, again, it's that test I feel like here. It's that test of the the old school, new school flavor here. And I can't wait to see what these two – it's funny because this is, I believe, Azriel's debut for Titan as well, isn't it? Mm-hmm. So that's going to be yes, it's gonna it be is. cool to see what Azriel shows the Titan faithful this Saturday. Well, so with Rocket, the first time I ever saw Rocket, he was in a three-way dance against Smiley and Nikos Ricos. You know, and – he impressed everyone that saw him, you know? Um, and so like, I've always, like I said, always been about giving the younger guys an opportunity. Now, originally Azrael was going to wrestle somebody else. Uh, I was, that's why I contacted Azrael 
but then the person couldn't make it. So I said, all right, cool. Let's put him in there with somebody young. So we put him in there with Rocket, you know. Um, Asriel is someone that I've been wrestling since uh, the early 2000s. Uh, I want to say 2000, actually. Might even be 99, but, you know, um, he's someone that, I mean, if you look at him, he's in phenomenal shape. But he's always been the one to test, whether it's me, Moff, Key, Hamza, it didn't matter who it was. He was the one that you could test him and he'll test you back. You know, whether it's his cardio, his stamina, his agility, you know, his strength, because he is undercover strong, you know. Um, and he's always someone that I enjoyed. He's creative. He, I always enjoyed wrestling him, you know. So it would make sense if I'm bringing in Azrael, I'll put him in there with someone who was the younger version of him or could be the younger version of him, you know. Ooh, um, okay. Well, I mean, if you look at the theme of the show, it's all... Yeah. You know, the, the new age versus the originals, yeah. you know, and Azrael, he's going to have to face that just like all of us, you know, as time goes on, eventually he's going to catch up. Nobody beats Father Time, yeah. but let's see, you know, how prepared both of these guys are to face each other. You know, I think Azrael is going to, you know, with the experience advantage, you know, more than likely come out on top. However, I like the underdog, too. The underdog's got a lot of surprises up his sleeve, so you can't just count him out, you know? And we've been talking about it this whole show. This is one of those where you really, you might think you know, but you can't predict for sure because yeah. anything is possible, you know what I mean? No, it really is. And at one point, Azrael was one of those guys that he was that same underdog mentality. So mm -hmm. if I'm rocking, I'm definitely, I'm watching Azrael tapes. I'm watching, hey, go back to the Special K days. Watch out when he was young. Start studying yeah. that and bring that Saturday. Because especially with a match yeah. like this. Like, especially there's going to be more eyes on Titan this weekend than there have been ever. You know, there's gotten more press. I don't know if you noticed, but I've definitely noticed that more guys have been doing podcasts about this show. I've been doing press releases. I've been doing promos. You know, a lot of people are going all out. You know, a lot of it is because they respect me, and I, I appreciate that totally. You know, but there's definitely a lot more eyes on this. You know, and you have to understand that this is the time for you to step up the game. You know, uh, I had sent in a private message to the roster. The hey, listen, you know, I want you guys to have fun, but at the same time, look your best. Make sure your gear is on point. Make sure your, you know, your hair, your face, everything on point, your makeup, because there's going to be a lot of people who are going to see you, and you don't want to be the guy that they're like, oh, the guy that just wore the raggedy old wife beater. You know what I'm saying? You want to be the guy that stands out, you know, and if everyone's standing out, then it's going to be your wrestling that really makes you stand out more than anything, you know, but don't give them a reason to not watch your wrestling or pay attention, you know, and this is one of those, those, those cases where, you know, if Rocket is serious about it, he'll come looking like, you know, the Godfather all pipped out, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Definitely. No, and this is going to be, again, with, the, with, a, with a card like this, it definitely shows why it's going to be so stacked, why it's going to be so, like, insane to be in that atmosphere on Saturday. And it's true, though. My my whole social feed this week has been Titan, Titan, Titan. And that's a good thing, though, because, mm -hmm. again, it's showing how invested people are, not only in the matches, mm -hmm. but what this night represents. And, again, end of the day, it comes out to it's about you. And that's the great thing about it. It's showing that respect for what you've done for this, and I can't wait for how – turns out on Saturday. But also, again, of how crazy this night already is, when I saw this announcement, again, it really felt like, okay, this is Max Knight right here. Because from that promo earlier, we saw him there. But I can't believe the special guest ring announcer for that night is Mark Clemson himself. How, how did this happen? I want to know this story. How did this transpire to get this to happen for that night? Honestly, uh, this is a surprise on Titan's behalf. Yeah. Um, I had hit up Mod Trom and Mark Clemson to come hang out at the show, which, you know, they were going to be there anyway. Yeah. Um, but then uh, Charlie, he threw it out there out of nowhere. And I was like, what? <laughs> and Pop's so huge. And, like, we used to always tease Mark Clemson because uh, 
you know, as ring announcers, commentators, whatever, you know, you're on the low end of the totem pole when it comes to, you know, behind the scenes and whatever. But we used to say that, you know, he negotiated A-Rod pricing for his commentating pay. <laughs> so we were like, oh, he got the green uh, M&Ms for his contract on this one. You know what I mean? He went all out. But, um, no, it, it's it's pretty awesome that Mark is going to be a part of this and in front of the camera because for all the years that I've been wrestling, some of my favorite years were the years I got to commentate with Mark Clemson. Yeah. And, you know, we had a friendship inside the ring and outside the ring. Um, and you know, every he's one of the guys that holidays, birthdays, we always talk, you know, other things, we always meet up whenever we can. And no matter what, you know, I've known Clemson as long as anybody else almost in this business. Uh, and I got to witness him grow up, he got to witness me grow up, you know, and it's very cool that he gets to be a part of this. And not only be there, but also be a part of it. You know, um, it's really cool to me that that's one of the best surprises that Charlie threw at me for this show. You know, and I, I popped, like I said, huge. And I was like, oh, A-Rod's going to be in town. That's what's up. <laughs> oh, man, that's great. Now, again, when I saw that that flyer, I'm like, oh, this is, it's, it was like the cherry on top. Like, it was just, mm -hmm. that's great. That's great to see again. So also again for those watching and those that are gonna be there Saturday, this is gonna be a treat. So definitely look forward to that. Next up, this matchup again. We started talking about them earlier. I can't wait to talk about this. The world championship on the line here, TCW heavyweight championship, as Johnny Moran defends against KTB. And I, I want to say you have your hand in this somehow. Because you sent Johnny I just you sent him a beast, legit. <laughs> like this is Johnny Two Belts. <sighs> so, so ultimately, when all is said and done, you know, I'm glad that I had this feud with Johnny Moran because we were given freedom, creativity to express and come up with different things uh, for the last year. Um, and this is more of that storyline. Uh, to be honest, we never came up with an end for the storyline. Uh, we just were planning on just going and riding the wave as long as we could ride. Um, but, you know, I'm very proud that Johnny Moran has stepped up to what he's been. We, I put him through hell the last year, you know, um, I definitely think that there's still some parts of his game that need polishing, but the only way he can get that is by being in there with guys like Kyle the Beast, who, again, what did we talk about with Titan? This is the platform to go up to that next level. You can't get to that next level without guys like Kyle the Beast who are on that next level. You know, Kyle the Beast, I've known him since he was about 15, 16 years old. Um, KTB, I know he doesn't like to be called Kyle anymore. Oh, I'm so sorry. But <laughs> maybe if I say it enough times, he'll get pissed off and he'll beat the shit out of Johnny Moran. But, um, you know, KTB is someone who has totally transformed himself. If you see him when he was first starting in this business, fat, chubby kid, didn't know how to do anything serious to the animal that he is now. There's nobody that works harder than him in this business than KTB. Yeah. You know, and it, it, there's no reason why he isn't on TV every week getting paid. He should be. I totally believe that, 1,000%. Now, Johnny Moran needs to understand that he's got to step up his game and get to that next level. Because as we get older, obviously, the opportunity becomes less and less. You know, Moran's got the following online. He's got, you know social media presence. Um, it's got a good look, good size. He just needs someone to take him there. I opened the door for him. Now we're going to push him through. You know, um, storyline wise, you know, he took my hand in my title reign. I want a revenge. Bringing KTB was the best sort of revenge that I could think of. So pretty much that's that whole match to me in a nutshell. No, no, and definitely that story 
getting to watch it transpire between you two, it was something that I feel like you kind of don't see anymore. Like you see in certain promotions, they try to do stories, but it's usually that like, oh, in a month, that's it. The payoff's there. With this, mm -hmm. it had so many elements to it that it was like, again, you never knew when it was going to end. Who says it's, it, it's ended again? Like you said, exactly. you sent KTB. Mm -hmm. It might not have ended yet. Story still, yeah. a story never has its 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 last chapter. So it's great to see what you guys are doing. And Johnny Moran, like you said, he has that look to him. He's getting ready to step on that that platform right there and get to that next level. This matchup, I can't wait to see because again, KTB is a beast. You've said it. He he is a beast. He's great to see, killing it off at the Hammerstein a few weeks ago. Now coming in. Might end Johnny Moran's reign a little, little short. Who knows? This is another one. It's, it's not an easy prediction. <laughs> like I said, wouldn't that be a tragedy if that ever to happen? Nah. Um, like I said, I I fully expect this to be competitor for a match of the night. Yeah. Um, and and you know, like I said, I do things where I want to see people come back because they were so into what they saw. Yep. You know, and this was definitely one of the matches where I feel like you know, a lot of different things can happen from this point on. So let's see where we go with it. And like I said, nothing is written in stone. We haven't, we didn't set a finish. Everything yep. we're just riding the wave, and the wave hasn't even started to crest yet. You know what I mean? So let's see where we go. Exactly. So again, we again, I'm gonna I'm gonna steal SAT one more time. Expect the unexpected that night, because who knows? You're you're. You have your match. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But who knows if you, you stick your nose in that a little bit. Again, it's your show. You can do what you want that day. Honestly, so. honestly, I loved holding on to that belt. I have yeah. my arcade. I showed you the picture. The title was on my arcade. It looked great there. But I have the Catalyst Tag Team title there, but it's still missing the Titan Heavyweight Championship title there. So I wouldn't mind getting – it back and putting it back on my display <laughs> with my arcade so again you never know what happens guys so stay tuned but again we have more to talk about here including this matchup that i know has been since it's announced it's it's been the talk of the town it's been called a dream match for a reason it's i even talked about earlier this morning it's one of the cornerstones when you talk about japw in arcadia taking on which, again, I'm going to be a little biased because he's one of my best friends. One of the independent standouts and cornerstones of this generation right here, Anthony Gangone going at it here. This is a match cool. I can't wait to see here. Like, I I am a fan of Anthony Gangone. I've been a fan. Um, I think he's a brilliant mind for professional wrestling. I think he's a great wrestler. Um I think he was probably born too late. He really should have been born a lot sooner and been able to work with that older generation of professional wrestlers. Um, but, you know, he, it is what it is. Uh, he's a great wrestler. Storyline-wise, we wrestled last month, and, you know, Jay Bougie was out there, kind of cost me the match. Gangone thinks he's so smart. I got something for you, buddy. So I call one of my favorite people, one of my favorite wrestlers, one of the best wrestlers. And he would fight with me all the time. And I tell him, no, you are. You're a lot greater than you will ever know because there are so many people who have been influenced by Arcadia. So many people who watch wrestling because of Arcadia. And when you look at all the people who have had great matches, they've had it against Arcadia, you know, um, Arcadia is just somebody who is very special to me. Um, outside the ring, too, like, you know, from day one, we've always had a really close relationship. Um, you know, I was <laughs> I was the first person he called when he went on his first date with his wife. You know what I mean? Like, it was like that. Like, we, he's always been like my brother, my little brother. You know what yeah. I mean? I'm like his big brother. Um, and it's always been, and he has a brother that he's really tight with, you know, brothers and sisters stuff. He's got family, you know, but like wrestling wise, I'm, I was this guy and, um, you know, when he was another one, when he would be down and out, I would call him, to keep him up because, you know, real life's 
sometimes you just you really can't like we saw earlier today we just you just can't stop real life it happens yep. professional wrestling you know you might be making a living out of it but nothing's ever going to stop real life from you know stopping you from doing it mm-hmm. and you know i would keep in touch with him and check on him and make sure he was okay and keep him interested in wrestling because once you fall out of wrestling it's very hard to get back in yeah you know it really is a drug you know and I've seen a lot of guys who oh, I'm just going to take a little while off and then they never come back. Or if they come back, they're nowhere near as good or nowhere near as motivated. And, you know, it just becomes a waste. Mm-hmm. But Arcadia, you know, took his time off, focused on what he needed to. I always made sure that, you know, something he knew about wrestling was going on or whatever, just to whet his appetite. And he comes back. Arcadia has been on fire ever since he came back. I was gonna say it yeah. felt like he hasn't missed a step since his yeah, comeback too. Exactly. Like, yeah, he showed me his first match back in JCW, and you know he really didn't look like he had any time off at all. Yeah. Looked exactly the same way the last time I saw him. Looked exactly the same way the last time he wrestled. Yeah. You know, and you would never know that there was like a five year gap or whatever yeah. it was. You know what I mean? So, um, I have always been. A huge fan of his missile drop kick, springboard missile drop kick. Ooh, okay. One of my favorites uh, was Otani in New Japan and Zero One. He would hit it so beautiful. And Arcadia was as close to that as you can go. And every time he would hit it, and if I was commentating, I always made a big spectacle of it because, <laughs> I mean, it was, it was awesome. It was amazing. You know what I mean? And he could do things so seamlessly that he's kind of oblivious to the fact that not everyone could do that, you know, and, and for me, you know, that's what makes him special is he doesn't really realize that he's doing something special. He's just doing him. Yeah. I, I feel like he does that out of, again, humility too. That's like, I, I'm nothing special, but it's like the things he's doing. Like I always pop when I see that leg drop he does, which again, mm-hmm. it's like that moment of like, and when it connects, it's just perfection. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. It's, yeah. He's, he's amazing. And, that's the crazy part. He doesn't know how amazing he is, you know, how much of a standout he is. When I would tell him that guys in like in the Midwest and in Indiana, you know, when they would, when I would try to hit them up for work for JP, they'd all ask about him. Hey, is Arcadia still working? You think I could work with Arcadia? You know, and he'd get the hell out of here. No, bro, for real. Like, you know, there's so many people that when I talk about JP, he's one of the first names that come up, you know, because he was part of that worldwide, uh, you know, viewers. When Worldwide started to blow up, as YouTube started to blow up, he was one of the faces. Him, Jay Lethal, Azrael, those were the faces of Worldwide. So a lot of people grew up watching those guys and remembering those guys. You know? I'm guilty. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> it, it, there's a lot of people, you know, yeah. and, and it just it speaks volumes of how good of a wrestler Arcadia is that so many years have gone on. And one, he still looks the same. And two, people remember all that. Yeah. They remember it for a reason. It's not because you suck. It's because you're great. You know? yeah. uh, so with Gangone and Arcadia wrestling each other, this is definitely going to be – I know both guys want to wrestle each other. I know that both guys are looking forward to wrestling each other. But this is going to be my match, like my personal – I'm going to sit down and watch and just be a fan because, you know, I love watching both guys. And yeah. I feel like – this is going to be, you know, again, with uh, KTB's match and Azrael's match and pretty much all the other matches. This is going to be contender for match of the night. It, it really is. And, again, like, it, I, I can imagine. I know how it is with his – just the mindset he goes in. With this one, I don't know where his mindset is because he, he's bringing out something so different on Saturday, I feel like. Because this is, again, it means that much. And, again, I know Arcadia is going to bring something just – that crazy and innovative as well because they both do that it's it's why so many people love their both their bodies of work is it's never the same match when they go out mm-hmm. there it's never the same it's never like oh yeah they, they do this they do that there's a few moves you can expect like you said that drop kick that like the leg drop like i said but you know arcade is going to bring something crazy that night mm-hmm. and Ant's another one that would do the same i call him my older brother for a reason because I just love what he does, and I love getting to talk to him and hear what he, he thinks about this business as well. And I know this is going to be one that, again, you said it best. It might be contender right there for match of the night. 
Like mm-hmm. that's gonna be one you guys are not gonna want to miss. And even Matt Austin says he's another one guilty of that too. Matt, we all are, man. That J- JP Worldwide was it, it was great. It was ahead of its time. Favorite man. stuff. I love doing Worldwide because, like you said, it was ahead of its time. I mean, there was one other show that was online before us. Uh, it was for New England Pro, I believe it was. Um, but you know, Modtrom had made that show into something with their vision. You know, you could blame it on the the 420, but you know, they made JP stand out because you weren't seeing wrestling put out there like that. You know, even with the WWE's high quality, you know, editing equipment and you know whatever, it wasn't looking like JP Worldwide. You know, and then you were seeing all of the best wrestlers samoa joe homicide loki austin aries tyler black cm punk you know all the guys who are somebody today daniel bryan and then you were seeing the hit squad sat amazing red quiet storm you know arcadia jushin liger i mean everybody in it dude there was a match between samoa joe and okada before okada was okada you know what i mean before he was the rainmaker it was Samoa Joe and Okada happened on JAP. And to be honest, that was because TNA was doing JAP a favor. They were just kind of like, yeah, sure, make them do something. They didn't even realize what they had. Okada wow. became the greatest wrestler in the world for that five-year stretch. And Joe is Joe. Joe was always phenomenal. You know what I mean? And that's another one. AJ Styles. How many times have we had AJ Styles at JAP? You know, wrestling everybody. Jay Lee from the Briscoes. I mean, dude, you name it, Brody Lee, rest in peace. You know, all these guys that we had on Worldwide and on JAP, you know what I mean? And, you know, you want to be the next company to be like that. You know, look at Beyond. Beyond Wrestling is, I'm pretty sure that they had a big time, you know, uh, fan following for JAP because a lot of the stuff that they did was very similar to how JAP did things. You know, and Beyond is one of the top companies what did they call it for a while? The Pro Wrestling Guerrilla East Coast, because that's how big it was. You know what I mean? And that's all because JP, they set the standard, you know. And if you wrestled back then on that show, you knew you were somebody. You know what I mean? I was going to say, I feel like JPW was PWG before PWG existed in a sense. Like, look at, again, the who's who of who you're naming. It's like, I can imagine right now, someone's going to listen back to this and be like, wait, who was there? <laughs> They, they pro- there's yeah. so many I feel like don't even know the history of what JP had. Like again, getting to see Liger on there, Kenny Omega before the the huge blow up, all that. It's like again, anyone that you could think of went through those doors, and that's amazing. You know what's crazy? I remember, uh, and I don't know why this specific memory. Um, Ruby Riot wrestled for JP one time, and I remember talking to her. I was like, "Hey, you want to work for JP?" She's like, "What?" She was like, are you sure? I was like, yeah, you and Chris Dickinson. Oh, yeah, she jumped. She didn't, I didn't even have to ask, like, what was her price? She yeah. just jumped so quick because you know, back then everybody knew JP, yeah. you know, and it just, that was something that was special for all the wrestlers. They all, I mean, I can remember CM Punk the first time I ever met him. Him and Cole Cabana drove to uh, Charity Hall in Bayonne. And it was one of the last Bayonne shows. And he had said it. He was like, man, I want to wrestle you guys so bad. You know, I've been hearing about the His Squad coming up and, you know, seeing you guys. And I was like, I want to wrestle CM Punk and Cole Cabana. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it never happened, unfortunately. But, you know, like, that was something that it was an everyday occurrence when you wrestle for JP because yeah. people, tape traders and magazines and whoever could spread the word of mouth, that's how it was making it happen, you know? Yeah. There wasn't there wasn't that heavy you know internet influence because the internet was still in its infancy, you know. It's not until later on that worldwide came out in around 2006 yeah. that things changed. But you know even then before that we were I mean we were as popular as you could get and it was crazy yeah. that there wasn't you know we weren't on TV we weren't on you know pay per view or anything like that but people knew you know. I, my ex-wife used to get pissed off. I'd be walking in like Great Adventure or someplace. Hit Squad! I'd be like, yeah, what's up? You know, and she's like, how the hell do they know you? I don't know. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, it definitely was. That was the hot commodity. But you can find the tape of JAP. That was gold right there. Again, as we transition, you're trying to find on LimeWire. Where can I find JAP? What, what computer am I messing up today to get this JAPW match? Like, 
it's it's worth the virus. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was though, and again, like I say, nowadays it's so easy. It's sad, it's crazy to think like if JBW was around now, its success would be it's it would be the alternative. It really would have. It would have been the place, and it it was the place back then. But I feel like today it would have gotten just even crazier. Well, just is. think about it this way: if there's no JP, Ring of Honor doesn't ever open. Yep. You know, because Ring of Honor is directly influenced by JP because yep. Rob and Doug used to come and watch us at JP. You know, and there were other companies, USA Pro, ICW, that they would see us, but JP was the main company that they would come to, yep. and they'd see. I mean, look at all of that first year's roster on Ring of Honor. 90% JP guys, you know, with the exception of the West Coast guys, because they were West Coast, so they weren't wrestling for JP, but if they were, I'm sure they would have been wrestling for JP, you know. Yeah. But um, you know, JP influenced so many different things to this day, you know, and that's something I truly believe, you know, when Fat Frank and the old Booker Ray Sager, they were on point, you know, they were they had something special, you know. Yeah. Uh, they definitely knew, you know, their finger was on the pulse and they knew that, you know, they wanted to do things that stood out differently from what everybody else was doing. And that's something that Fat Frank always made sure of because when Fat Frank came up, you know, we talked about a lot for the hit squad, homicide and key. There was a glass ceiling with the indie guys back then, you know, you were a guy who protected your spot. You weren't letting any of the young guys in, you know, here we come, we demand the spot. We demand that we're given that opportunity, and guys are like, "Yeah." Frank went through the same thing. He tried to get you know people to run. People used to at first, people used to be like, "Oh, if you work for JP, that's you know you're a backyarder," and he took that and he you know made something huge out of it. He's like, "All right, cool. You're gonna want to work here." Sure enough, so many of the guys that you know when Frank started that said, "Ah, you're garbage," or whatever, were all begging to work for JP. And you know what Frank did? Yeah, sure, you can work. You just got to put over my guys. That's it. You know what I mean? And that's that's how it worked. You know, yeah. um, so that spirit is from Frank um, and his determination to become something. You know, and that spirit will live on with all of us that work for that company under him. You know, and and you know, you see, like I said, you see with Titan, it's directly heavily influenced by JAP. Yeah. One because me and Magic are there, but two because they were fans of JAP, and that's yeah. something that. It's really cool to be a part of. Trust me, it's not every day that you can feel a good vibe at a show. You no, definitely, definitely feel it. And it, it's great to see that that influence is there. And again, that influence has touched so many. That again, when you t- have those conversations, there's so many people that can be like, yeah, I saw this at JAPW. I saw this. I saw that. And it just it transcends. And it's going to continue to as, as time goes on. So that's amazing. Mm-hmm. But now, it's... It's time to really talk about the main event here. It's the reason why this is all happening here. Let's talk about this matchup right here. It's it's that guy. I don't know who he is though. It's it's, it's this newcomer here, um, Steve Monster Mac. I don't know if you heard of him. He's he's a it's newcomer. A now. It's against <laughs> against the Takeovers, Jay Bougie, and again, Jay him and the Takeover. They've been. They've been calling you out a lot. They've been hitting these promos. I saw what Jay had to say. And I just got to ask, what's the rebuttal here? You said you had a little bit of a story to tell here. So the floor is yours, Theo. So like I've been talking about this whole time, you know, coming up, it was me, Homicide, Key, Moff, Louie, Mace, Buffy from the Christopher Street Connection. The SAT, Red, Quiet Storm Divine, Late on the Tower of Torture, Jay Lover. Um, you know, there's a couple other guys who were along. We were all part of the wave. We were all hungry, looking for an opportunity. When there was a ceiling, no, you're too short. No, you're too fat. No, you're too Hispanic. No, you bleed too much. No, you can't wrestle enough. No, you know, you wrestle too good or whatever it was. They would try to do everything to keep us back. And then we developed this massive chip. There's a reason why all the hit squad guys, you know who we are. Whether you like us, you love us, whatever, it doesn't matter. You know who we are. 
So many people hate low key, right? So many people are keyboard warrior against low key. You know, and I know because you've seen Loki in the back. You know how he is. You know, if he wants to be a jerk, sure he can. But is he a jerk the whole time? No, he's teaching. But he's not going to let you see that. He's not going to let you know if you're not part of the the locker room. If you're not part of the brotherhood, because to him, he respects everything that comes with it. He puts the utmost pride in his work. Uh, and, you know, listen, I'm his cousin. I'm his blood. First cousins. We've had our fights. We've had our arguments. You know what I mean? But I would never, ever in a million years doubt that Loki doesn't love this and doesn't yeah. take this with respect. And the reason why he gets a pass from me is because I know what he went through because we all went through it together. We got told no, and we got told everything you could be told. Same thing with homicide. Homicide. He's too thug. He's too gangster. He, you know, English is a second language for him, so he doesn't speak as good as everybody else or as clean. You know, um, when you look at Moff, Moff is just a bully. Moff is just, you know, a, 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 a muscle head. You know what I mean? He's nothing, nothing, whatever. But we all ended up making a name for ourselves together. You know, so when I look at PJ Savage and Jay Bougie and all those guys, they're in the same spot that we were 25 years ago, trying to make a name for themselves, trying to get their foot through the door. And everywhere they work, if you notice, instantly they become the main event. You know, um, and that was the same situation with us. You know, the first show we'd be on, we'd open. Within the third show after that, we're main eventing because we stepped the game up. We changed everything, and that's what they're doing. That's what you're supposed to do. You know, that's what I said before. You got to get your guys. You ride with them. You die with them. You get each other's back. You look out. Take accountability for each other. Make sure they take accountability for each other. And you do the best that you can to change this business for the better. Not just for yourself, but for the for the whole business. Because there's going to be people that come after you. We didn't know that we were changing things for the generation after us and generation after that. To us, we were just trying to get a spot. We were just trying to do our best to be noticed, be seen. And we come out and we set fire that, you know, if, if it's not for us, listen, you could say a lot of things that you want to say, but I know for a fact in my heart, not for us, Ring of Honor doesn't exist. Because what we were doing in New York and New Jersey at the time is why Rob Feinstein dedicated a whole bunch of effort to us. Yep. You know, and Doug Gentry, they saw a lot in us because they saw us every week wrestling. And they were like, these are the guys. If ECW would have kept going, these are the guys that would have been in ECW carrying it on. Except the same thing with SAT and Red. You know, and they had exposure because they would go to Maryland and they'd see the guys down in Maryland. They go to you know Florida and Texas. And they'd see those guys. But when it came to the East Coast, there was no doubt. If you saw Hit Squad, Homicide, Low Key, SAT, Red, you knew you know that you were going to see great wrestling. And that was the demand that we put on for ourselves. And that's what these guys are trying to set. I have no problem with that. I'm all about it. I want them to succeed. At the same time, my whole thing about this was... Magic did me a favor. How can I repay Magic? He's got this kid, Jay Bougie. Jay Bougie's getting a little bit of a name for himself. Jay Bougie's really good. He's really talented. He's one of Magic's champions. If we do something to set up and I can help elevate him, higher profile status, nothing wrong with that. The same thing Magic did for me. <laughs> Jay Bougie, though. Take it to the next level, which is fine. Hey, listen, you, when you're young, you got to take the chance because if you don't, nobody else will for you. you know. And I'm all for them talking smack. They just have to understand that you don't just talk smack and get away with it. You talk smack and there's consequence. It's up to you how you handle those consequences. So while I like Jay Bougie and I, my whole goal was just, just to elevate him, which... We haven't even wrestled, and you've seen more Jay Bougie stuff in the last three weeks than you have this entire time. So he knows and he understands because he said it. This is his biggest match. But at 
the same time, I'm fired up. And when I'm fired up, that means that it's not going to be an easy night for you. That means that the bear paw starts coming out. And while you think I'm slower and faster, I mean, I'm not as fast as I used to be. When I'm pissed off and upset, and not just a little bit, but a lot, then it really comes out how much of an athlete I really am. Like the body wakes up for a hot minute. It's like, oh, hey, you can do this stuff. And then as soon as I do it, oh, I'm so old. You know what I mean? <laughs> and that's what's going to happen with Jay Bougie. Yeah. He's going to push the button. And I hope he does because it'll make the match better. Yeah. You know, and like I said, I really just want this to be a sign of thank you to Titan. Thank you to Magic. Thank you to JP, Frank, Bobby Lombardi from LIWF. Homicide, Key, Moff, Kyle the Beast, Louie, everybody that's been a part of my career, this is a thank you to them. Um, as much as this is, you know, a celebration for my career. I mean, to me, I'm just, I really do think I'm just a kid from Brooklyn. I'm not anything special. I'm funny. I know I'm funny. I'm cool. I'm, uh, you know, I know I'm the guy that a lot of guys turn to for advice. And, you know, and, and anybody could talk to me. I mean, you've seen how it is in the back. You know, people I never met before, I'm talking to and spending an hour talking about other stuff other than wrestling. But then we talked about wrestling with there for three hours. You know, um, it's funny because Keith Lee um, made his debut last night for AEW. Yep. You know, Keith Lee, we had only known each other maybe about a couple of months. Um, and he wrestled up here for, I believe it was Ace. And he was stranded. And I had invited him back to my house. I said, hey, bro, you can come hang out my house, and then I'll take you to the airport in the morning when it's time to go. And he was like, you would do that? I was like, yeah, I would do it. You know, you're, you're, I know who you are, but, like, even if I didn't know, you know, as long as you ain't going to steal nothing from my house, which I don't think you will, you know, yeah, I'm all about it. He's like, oh, man, thank you so much. You know what I mean? And, like, we hung out, and we, he was – so amazed by like that's because my house is like back then it was like you know a kitty playground i had video games and wrestling dvds everywhere like dickinson and eyfl used to come over and be like oh it's time to play some video games or you know time to watch wrestling and yeah. you know, and that's what we did and me and keely bonded over that you know and it's cool that that's because of wrestling that you know right now this guy literally hyped up the entire professional wrestling world last night Someone that I'm cool with, someone that's in my phone. If I want, I could just call him right now and talk to him. You know what I mean? And it's cool that I'm able to have that because of pro wrestling. So, yeah. like I said, I'm very thankful. And this is my this match is going to be my thank you to pro wrestling, um, to everyone who's helped me and supported me. Um, you know, over the 25 years that I've been around, you know, this is pretty amazing to me because, like I said, I'm nobody. I'm just, you know, Steve. You know, and the fact that people want to celebrate me, it means the world to me because, you know, how many people, you know, get a chance to celebrate anything, you know? So I really just, I want everybody to have a good time this weekend, whether you're a fan or wrestler or whatever, hang out, you know, just enjoy the vibe. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to create a set list uh, to play for music before, you know, while everybody's coming in because I want it to be my type of vibe. Yeah. You know, I'm very I'm very much into 90s hip hop and you know I like you know my 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 metal and my rock and stuff but I want it to be a reflection of the vibe that I wanted to create. Yeah. And I hope that you know as people are walking in they see that it sets the tone and then the rest of the night everybody just goes in there give it your best but have a lot of fun no matter what. And that's just great. have a lot of good memories. That's great. And again that's what I just hearing about it right now. It's already, it's creating that vision. Like you can see it now. We're not even there yet. And that's great. Mm -hmm. That's what you, that's what you want from it. You want to start seeing like, this is what's going to happen on Saturday. That's awesome. Uh, again, mm -hmm. for Jay Bougie, if I'm him, get ready. Cause again, if that, if that monster, I'm telling you now, there's a couple of moves. There's a couple of moves I've been saving. You know what I mean? And uh, I believe he's going to fall victim to a few of them. So, <laughs> Well, listen, I'm not sleeping either. I mean, he's younger yeah. than me. No. He's, you know, got almost 20 years, you know, on me. Actually, I think my career is longer than he's been alive, if I'm not mistaken. So, 
You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like I've been wrestling longer than he's been alive. It's just crazy to think, but yeah. you know, um, I'm looking to pull out some stuff. I want people, like I said, there's going to be eyes on this. I want people to be like, not just for him, but for me, like, God damn, where the hell that come from? You know what I mean? Because you know, I'm sure there's people that have, haven't seen me. So I know that there's going to be a lot of old JP fans coming to the show because they've hit me up, you know, and I'm all about that. So I want them to, you know, when they see me, not to think, oh, he should be out of the ring already, but I want them to see, like, damn, he still can go, you know, because no matter what, when you get to my age and you've seen what I've seen and done what I've done, you start to doubt anything that you can do because you know that the body can only go so far, you yeah. know, and uh, like I said, for me, it's, it's also a, uh, hey, let me show you guys just a little bit of what I hide. <laughs> No, and I, I I can say again from firsthand experience, seeing what you're you're still doing. Again, I've been lucky to get to watch you, especially at Catalyst now. And I, again, I'm gonna say this out of my perspective: you haven't missed a beat. It's been great to see what you can still do in there. And again, look, this picture says it alone: you're holding tag titles right now. Again, it's 25 years in, 25 years young. I'm gonna say because that's that's how it looks like here. Because you guys are holding tag gold. You and G's, G's another one who, another vet in this business, and you guys are holding tag gold. And for the rest of the people at Catalyst, uh, good luck. (laughs) (laughs) And and like I said, you know, that's not even the final form because there is something that's going to change with that that situation there. But, you know, in in all due time, we'll be able to, you know, show everybody what we're talking about. But, you know, G's is someone that I am very much – uh, respectful of. Uh, he's so great in the ring. He's very, he's always hungry and motivated to do better and get more. You know, since I met him, you know, he wasn't just satisfied with winning. He wanted to win more and do more. And you know, that's why he was, when I had say, he was my JP champion because I knew no matter what his size is, you could look at him and see, oh, he's, he's way short and, you know, he's not that big, but you can't tell him that he's not that. Because he wrestles like he's six foot three, you know, like Brock Lesnar size. If you look at Jesus and how he wrestles, he wrestles like that size. You know what I mean? So I could never ever tell anyone, oh, you're 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 not that whatever. If you're wrestling like that and you look the way you, he does, I mean, he's got a million dollar body. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But you know, when most wrestlers are you know five ten and up, and you're under five eight then you know it, it might come off to them like ah he's he's not nothing but then you see him wrestle and he wrestles better than everybody and he's not that young yeah. <laughs> you know what i mean he's been around a hot minute yep. but he's wrestling his best now than ever in his career which is yep. testament to black g so yep. you know that's pretty cool that i get to in my 25th year of wrestling i get to be a tag champ you know what i mean yeah. it's, it's pretty dope well there you go there's your thoughts on it i wonder um if he could say something right now, what he would say? Uh, maybe, maybe this. Keith, my man, Monster Mac, 25 years. Yo, to what started out as admiration for you and the rest of the doghouse guys to being accepted as one of y'all. I appreciate that, man. I appreciate you. You know what I'm saying? You've been able to do something that a lot of people don't do. A lot of people say they want to be a pro wrestler and they quit. You've done it for 25 years, you know what I'm saying? You should be happy, you should be proud, you know what I'm saying? From traveling around the world, going to Japan, um, dominating the indie scene, you know what I mean? And you're still going strong, you know what I mean? Congratulations on 25 years, and you still got a lot left, man. You ain't slowing down, you shouldn't slow down, because you're able to still do this at a high level, and you know what I mean? And we got some Catalyst Tag Team titles to defend, big homie. See you soon, congratulations. (laughs) <laughs> that was pretty awesome. That one caught me good, you know. Um, I, I, it really, I, I mean, like, I'm gonna try to segue everything perfectly. Like, boom. <laughs> that was that was a brilliant one. That was really well done on your part. Uh, it's crazy because for so many years, the fans in the Jersey wrestling scene, yeah. the big fight was CZW versus JP, and CZW had blackout to you know go up against. JP's hit squad and you know it was always that comparison you know you had uh G's you had Ruckus and you had uh Eddie Kingston 
And if I tell you that, like, there would never be, there's never been a bone of contention between the whole group. We've all been like fam. You know what I mean? It's like, ah, oh, boo. You know what I mean? But, you know, those guys respect the hell out of all of them. And geez, like I said, geez to me is wrestling his best wrestling now yeah. than he's ever been. And, you know, it's paying off. He's part of NWA. You know, we got the Catalyst tag titles. Um, just so many good things going on for him right now. And, you know, he's been, he's been earning it. You know, he put in his time. And it's finally great to see him be able to reap the rewards of all his hard work. You know, so um, thank you very much, Jesus. Pop for that. That was pretty awesome. <laughs> right. And it shows it right there. Look at that video. He's working out while he's like, that's, that's this the dungeon. Like, that's the Philly dungeon. <laughs> if you have his Instagram, you know about the Philly dungeon. I'm afraid of that place. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that place that is was, scary. That was great. But again, it shows you, again, 25 years young in it. Also, again, we're talking Catalyst. There was one more guy from there that wanted to send you a message. And you know him very well from both both sides of the spectrum. So let's see what he had to say. What's up, everyone? Ash Samuels, executive producer, Catalyst Wrestling. Just want to say a happy anniversary to Steve Mack. Congratulations on 25 years. You know, it's been a pleasure getting to work with you on both sides, in the ring and on the production side. You know, one half of the Catalyst Tag Team Champions, Steve Mack. Steve Mack also a contributing factor to much of the post-concussion syndrome for myself and others in the early 2000s and ensuring that most of us never look at the wall, any wall, the same way. Steve, happy anniversary. Here's the 25 more years in this business regardless of what you're doing in it. But hey, maybe it's going to be in the ring because uh, those lariats aren't going to throw themselves, right? <laughs> That's pretty dope. <laughs> uh, that was a lit uh, message right there. But I'm yeah, for real. <laughs> he had so so many names coming up. It was pretty funny. He was always a different name every week when he was starting out. But he, I'm very proud of that dude, man. He, you know, he could have been taken as a joke for a long time, you know, but he made something out of his himself, you know, and that's something that as a wrestler. You know, a lot of times, like you call me Theo, a lot of guys call me their uncle, some people call me their wrestling dad, whatever it is. I'm very fortunate enough to see a lot of people grow from young men and young women into, you know, vets and successes and just, you know, watching them grow and mature. And he's definitely someone that really has surprised me with how well he's done with his life because, you know, it would have been real easy to. Uh, he fell by the wayside. No, oh, that's not that big of a surprise. But the fact that he is doing all this, I'm very proud of him. You know, Catalyst is a place that a lot of people respect. And they know of it as, you know, a place to go for great wrestling. You know, and that's because of him. You know, his effort behind the scenes and what he's given to the wrestlers who work there. You know, he's given a lot of freedom, creativity, and a lot of trust. You know, and... It's very cool that at this age, you know, I get to share it with him and he gets to put me in a position where he could kind of like thank me for helping him out when he started, you know. But more than anything, I really do appreciate the fact that I get to watch him do his thing because, like I said, it could have been totally different for him. But instead, I get to be proud of him, you know. Yeah. Thank you, no, Lee. Lee's no. Lee's. Lee's, Lee's. Lee's. No, it definitely has been great. And again, like I said, getting to grow up watching you guys and now getting to learn so much from all of you, it's been amazing. Like, And he's definitely won that. Again, the first time I got to meet him uh, actually was being introduced like that. I was like, oh, you remember this guy from Special K? I'm like, okay, it's starting to ring a bell. But then learning everything he has, like one of the smartest minds I've known in this business now. Mm -hmm. Like, It's great to see what he's doing there. And again, Catalyst is on fire right now so yeah definitely yeah. but another another pick again you, you mentioned the match earlier and we mentioned how important especially for the indies this group was let's show this picture right here again some call this like the tri-state curtain call happening at beyond years ago again especially for me you four are the pillars for this ndc 
again, there might be a few more missing. There's again, we can mention SAT, we can mention Red, we can mention a few others. But seeing you four there, it was one of those that's like, it's it, it brings like even right now I got goosebumps seeing that picture again. Like it's insane what you guys have done. And again, it's transcended into the influences there. When you got when you talk to anyone nowadays, they mention one of you four, if not all four at the same time, just what it's done for us. Like, and it's great to see that picture there. And it's like, I can only imagine how, the, what was that reaction that day in that ring? Like, how are the, cause I can, right. I've seen it on YouTube, but I can only imagine how it, it felt to be in that ring at that point. Well, even before when the match was announced, because we had the month before we won the tournament for tomorrow, Moff and I, and you know, honestly, I never expected that. Like earlier that year, we wrestled for Beyond. We wrestled against Dickinson and Jaka, and those are our guys. You know what I mean? We were just trying to, you know. Actually, it was the year before that. Now that I think about it, it was tournament for tomorrow. The for the year before, um, we wrestled them, and like you know, people were popping for the hit squad, and they were you know, I guess people. Some people knew us, some people don't. But when we left, they were like, "Oh man, that's pretty cool that these guys, you know, doing this," and. We were able to have a little bit of a run, you know, for that year. And it all culminated with, you know, Tournament for Tomorrow 4. And we were in there with um, Kimberly and Shinron, uh, Dickinson and Jaka, and EYFBO. And it was an elimination match. And the last two guys was – last two teams was us and EYFBO. And Santana Ortiz, LAX, whatever you want to call them, <laughs> um, proud and powerful. But um, we had given one of the hardest fought battles yeah. in that last ten minutes, and that's on. You can find that. Just look it up. Watch the last ten minutes, and we're all willing to die in that last ten minutes. All four of us. You could see it by our effort, you know, and that really spark something heavy in me and moth you know it was from that point on you know because up to that point we were the old guys and we were in there with the young lions and you know they were just trying to scratch and take a chunk out of us and try to slow us down and being in that moment we that sparked us you know and i just remember talking to drew he's like oh we got to come back because this is supposed to be the last show at that venue, FET, um, we want to bring in something big. Or it was supposed to be for a while. Like there was going to be, you know, end of the year uh, show, and then it was going to be a few months off. So I was like, well, I don't know what we could do. We could try to get the Briscoes, but their Ring of Honor contract really limits them. Um, do you want me to call Key? Because Key really wasn't doing too many shows in the Northeast at the time. Yeah. You know, he's focused mostly on Japan and stuff. I was like, why don't we do Key and Homicide? And, um, it, you know, Drew was all about it. You know, he's like, if you think we could do it, I'm down to pay for it, you know. And, uh, you know, we set it up. And when they announced it, because, you know, it was a tease. It was like, is it going to be the Briscoes? Is it going to be Red Dragon? Uh, is it going to be uh, War Machine? Who's it going to be? And there was a blank spot. And people were like, oh, who the hell could be in that blank spot? It'd probably be just a joke. And when they saw it was Homicide Key, everyone lost their mind. They're like, oh, because no one expected Key to ever wrestle for Beyond. You know, so, you know, we go and we have that match. And hearing Homicide's music play, hearing Key's music play, I, you know, they're my best friends from my family. I've always been a mark for their entrance, their music, and everything that comes with them. You know, you guys, the fans are all marks for it, but I'm a mark too. You know, I'm, not, I'm not afraid to say that. They're my family, you know. Um, I'm very proud of everything that, you know, my family has been able to do. And to share that moment with them, you know, considering that for a while Moff wasn't around, we had a falling out with him. We were able to overcome that. We were able to get back onto – you know, business uh, terms and just, you know, rebuild our, our relationship. Yeah. And to have that special moment with them, the four of us that, like I said before, we went to Japan, 
you know, we went all over the the country, all over the world together, you know, and share that in front of those fans. Beyond fans are some of the greatest fans I've ever wrestled in front of. I, I'll always say that, you know, it's something different when you're wrestling and they're right there on you and you could hear everything that they're saying. You could hear everything that they're doing and they're so lit. I mean, you know, they, everything they do, you feel it. It's like an energy source coming right at you when you're in the middle of the ring and in, 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 in that venue too. That venue is just a remarkable venue. That's easily my favorite venue. Um, and then, you know, we have the moment we're wrestling each other and uh, Pinky Sanchez ruins the match. So there's no winner. Everyone was pissed. But they knew that Pinky was going to die. He was going to be the sacrificial. Oh, man. yeah. He, oh. And, and, you know, when he ate death and all of us stood over him and, you know, the crowd was going insane, you know, and it was one of those feelings like, man, if we don't do anything else, this is a great way to end this story, you know, because just being in there with all of us, you know, I, it's always weird. I know a lot of people are always, you know, there's a lot of people, as much as you guys love me, there's a lot of people who hate me too, you know, for whatever reason. I don't know, you know, what it is, but there's a lot of people who, you know, they, for whatever reason, they talk a lot of trash. And one of the things they always say is, you didn't sign a contract to a TV company. And they always make it like it's something that, like, I was supposed to do and I didn't do and I was a letdown because I didn't do it. But the crazy part is, yeah, everyone signed a contract except for me. It never bothered me. And the reason why, because I always appreciated everything I was given. I was always thankful for the opportunities that I was given. You know, there's a lot of times where I'm like, man, who else knows what this feels like? Don't matter what it is. You know, one of the things I talk to when I talk to students, there's what, 8 billion people in the world. Let's say there's a hundred thousand wrestlers around the entire world. Let's say even 250, right? That's less than a tenth of the population, right? Not even, that's less than a percent of the population. You know what I'm saying? How many of them know what it's like to stand on the top rope and hear your name chanted? Or how many of them know what it's like to stand in the middle of the room and everyone's cheering for you or booing for you? Not that many people know. But I know, I know what it's like around the world. I wrestled in Puerto Rico, Japan, I've done stuff in Mexico, I've done stuff in Canada. You know what I mean? I've been all over. I know what it's like. I've done it with guys that I looked up to, Vader, Mike Awesome. Done it with guys like SAT, who I rode all over with. I've done it with everybody you could, somebody that's come from the East Coast. There probably isn't too many people that I haven't wrestled. And I've been fortunate enough to be at some point of their career, we intersected. To me, that's dope. Because yeah. like I said, I never saw much for me. I never saw, you know, I wasn't going to be a scientist or, you know, a, a carpenter or anything like that. You know, I was going to be, find a job and whatever, if, I, if I can make it stick, it sticks. You know what I mean? But the fact that, like, my name was in the WWF magazine at a time when WWF Magazine meant something. Then it twice. You know what I mean? I'm, I got stuff on the WWE Network, or it used to be the network. It's Peacock now, whatever the hell you want to call it. But my face is there. Yeah. You know? My face is on WWE Instagram. My face is on WWE uh, Facebook. At one point on Impact, when they did their top 50 moments, I was a part of that. You know what I mean? I didn't have a contract, but I was still part of that. I got. I had fans hitting me up from the UK and Germany and France. Are you ever going to wrestle? Because we see a lot of JAP out here and a lot of USA Pro and a lot of ICW, a lot of old Ring of Honor. I would love to see the Hit Squad over here. You know what I mean? So it wasn't like I wasn't known. You know. And one of the coolest things I ever found out. My father and I were never close. Right. I know my father's still around. I'll talk to him every once in a while. But it wasn't like father and son, but at everybody who's ever had my last name, Carasquillo, 
I'm one of the most famous Karis Golos in the history of the world. Not just my time, but out of everything that's ever happened in recorded history, if they look up Karis Golo, my name's going to be one of the first ones to pop up. That means a lot to me. That means more than almost anything, especially a contract. Would have been nice to have gotten paid. Sure. <laughs> you know what I mean? But when you look at all the stuff that I've been able to accomplish, all the things that I've done, man, I'll take that any day. You know what I mean? It, it, it All it says to me was that I worked hard to get what I wanted. Yeah. And I wanted that stuff. The only thing I'm missing, and honestly, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't is to be in a video game as myself and not just like a create a part or something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. But that's it. I'm, I'm happy with what I've done. You know what I mean? I got to travel with my friends. I got to make new ones. I got to meet idols and legends. How awesome it was for me to meet Stan Hansen and him mark out because I had a shirt that he was on. You know what I mean? Like he's, I, I had a, a shirt with him and Brody from a magazine cover and, um, I brought it so he could sign. And when he saw it, he took a picture of it himself on his phone to send to his wife and be like, hold this for me. Like, how awesome is that? You know what I'm saying? Like, I, listen, I'll take that all day over being, you know, on TV all the time. Yeah. You know? So, um, like I said, I'm very fortunate and blessed. And if it if I don't wake up tomorrow, God forbid, just know that I'm cool with everything I've done. I'm cool with all the people I've done work with. You know what I mean? Because even people like yourself that I seen you as a kid. I mean, you're still a kid now. Don't get me wrong. But you know what I mean? I see you as a much younger child. <laughs> and now you're growing into that. You have your own show. You're doing all this stuff. It's not because, you know, you just fell into it. You've been working hard at it. You've been putting in the effort. And you've been doing it for a while now. And it's cool for me to see that. Because I knew you before you did all this. So I'm proud of you in that. You know what I mean? Just like there's a lot of other wrestlers that I'm proud of. Or people just in the business in general. Because it's not easy. Being a human is not easy. It's tough. It's hard work. But when you can see people doing what they love and doing it a lot and doing it well, that's awesome. So thank you for doing all the stuff that you do. Because like I said, I see you all the time hustling and putting out your stuff and doing all your things. It's not easy, but I know that you do it. I know that you're working hard at it. So that's pretty cool to me. No, thank you so much, Theo. That's again, I, I'm about to tear up here on this podcast. Jeez. <laughs> Cause again, it is, and again, I get it. People say what they say about the contract stuff, but end of the day, like I said, comes from me, comes a lot of kids in my generation, all that you are again, a legend to us. There's a reason we call you Theo. There's a reason why, we look up to you so much. And again, it's crazy to think, again, having this conversation right now to me is like, it, it means the world to get to talk to you like this and get to once in a blue, be able to just, Hey, hit up Theo and be like, Hey, what's up Theo? How's this going? Like, mm -hmm. I just get to pick your mind for a bit. It's always, it's always great. And to hear those words, it's amazing. And thank you so much for that. And again, it's something that this is all great. It's real though. It's real, real stuff. You know what I mean? That's the one thing that, <laughs> Uh, maybe the reason why I never got a contract is because I'm too real sometimes. And, you know, like Homicide says, I'm not humble. I'm not, uh, I'm way too humble. I mean, I'm not, you know, selfish and I'm way too humble and I'm too real for certain people. But, you know, I'd rather be real and not be on TV than to be fake and miserable and have a contract. No, you know definitely. I mean? And again, as someone, as one of the biggest fans of yours, I'll say, Definitely, I'm glad that never changed, and that's still here to this day. But also, yeah. I I got one last video, one last person that wants to say something. So, to to continue the moment here, here he is. What's up, y'all? I go by the name of Homicide Bass right now. I'm, I'm gonna call myself D. I'm a coach. Uh, I'm whatever a leader. Um, I want to talk to Steve, not Master Mac. And the reason why is that Steve is a personal, personal, one of my best friends in the whole world. One of the biggest heart, not only in pro wrestling, but as a personal issue in life. Um, Steve Mac did so many things for everybody, including myself. You know, he is one of my first students 
and professional wrestling, but you also give me some advice. Uh, I mean, I'm still here because of Steve. Why not I'll be at Rikers Island? That's a different story. But I want to say congratulations to Steve Mack. I love you, bro. Hopefully, 30, 40, 50 more years, you're not a grumpy old man. You're just a man with a lot of passion. I love you, bro. And I want you to be a douchebag and hurt somebody. But it's a different inside story. Happy birthday, congratulations, Ichiban, all that good stuff. Happy 25 years. Hola, le carone, Muscle Mac forever. <laughs> <laughs> I told you. <laughs> he says I'm going to be He just say he wants me to be a dick on somebody else. So <laughs> that was awesome. <clears throat> uh, him. There's two people that I talk to on the regular now, and you know, life is a lot different for me because you know, um, I changed my whole scene. Um, I ended up getting divorced, and it was just you know, there's certain things that you got to do. And, um, you know, in that process, you know, there's only two people that I talk to every day besides the girl that I'm with, Liza. Um, and that's Homicide. And the other one is my friend Guapo. Um, you know, the two of them, they're always telling me, like, you're way too humble. You need to know that how good you are. And, and to be honest, that's just not me. I'm never going to be that way. Like, I'm always going to be the type to, you know, you get it, not me. You know what I mean? Um, but, you know, uh, with Homicide, you know, we both came from the same type of background and we both know how easy it is to be the other way and not be in wrestling and be successful and you go through, you know, he went through it a little bit, you know, he went to jail, he knows what it's like on the inside, you know, and, and it's an everyday struggle, you know, when you're around the element but you got to pull yourself out. And he did. And no, it, it just, it was, it hasn't been easy, but at the same time, you know, wrestling for him is like breathing air for everybody else. It's just so natural. And, you know, he, it's crazy because when I look back to my training, like I did my bumps and I did my running the ropes and stuff like that, but I didn't do it like as repetitious as some people did. You know, uh, some people had to do it every day for months, but I didn't do it every day for months. And, you know, that's speaking as honest as possible. You know, I, I, my training was pretty much, I feel like I learned the psychology first and then learned everything else because of homicide. And, but like we were learning on the fly with a lot of the stuff because, you know, we were from right away, people were always wanting to use us and you know put us in positions to be seen so there wasn't really that much time to learn the ropes until you were out in front of the crowd you know and homicide got me ready for that and you know no matter what you know we were able to teach each other show each other the right way to do things and show each other you know not to take things so serious because when you get caught up in this life you really forget who you are. You forget that this is just entertainment. While it is something you have to respect, ultimately that's what it comes down to. It's entertainment. This isn't, you know, uh, even with football and baseball and basketball, that's all become entertainment. It's no longer competitive. But like, let's say like the Olympics, you don't yeah. see anybody just cheesing because they're in the Olympics. They're training and when they have to do, pro, you know, TV time, everything's serious. And it's not until after they're, you know, a gymnast or an athlete that that's when they show their real side up to that point, everything's serious. And like with wrestling, that's the same thing. You know, so many people take it so serious and so strict. They forget that you're supposed to have fun, you know, but homicide and I, we always talk about it. You know, as we get older, there's a lot of things we hate about wrestling, you know, but there's a lot of things that we love about it as well. And as long as we can talk, it's funny that he talks about the grumpy old man thing because we always say it. We're the grumpy old men of the locker room now. You know, but I mean that's just between us because you've seen how we are. We're laughing. You know, one of the things that people used to always say they knew I was at a show because they would hear me laugh, you know. Yeah. And uh it, it just it goes to show like 
that's what people really pay attention to. They don't pay attention to what you do in the ring. They pay attention to your character, pay attention to what kind of person you are and how you treat other people. That's because that's what shows first and foremost, you know, and I've always prided myself on being the least judgmental out of everyone in the locker room because I understand anybody could have a bad day. doesn't matter what, you don't know what they're going through. And, you know, just cause they're like that, you know, the one time doesn't mean like that. They're, they're like that all the time. And, um, you know, homicide be like, yo, screw that dude. Let's beat his ass. Oh, nah, D, chill. You got to chill. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And like, relax. You don't know what's going on. You know, no. it, it, it's, and, uh, you know, I, I pride myself on being the voice of reason for a lot of people. Uh, whenever we go out, I'm usually the sober one because I want to make sure everyone gets home. You know what I mean? But, um, uh, it, it's always been surreal to me that, you know, I've had, like I said, the, the career, the friendship, the path that I've been on, uh, and that guys like Homicide and Louis, um, have been around me the entire time. And, you know, we always had each other's back. We always make sure that we're in a good place. Uh, same thing with my friend Guapo. You know, a lot of people don't like him because he tells people straight up, you know, and they think he shouldn't be that way. But he's coming from a life experience. And, yeah. you know, I always, I don't judge him. I don't judge anyone because that's just how I am. You know what I mean? I, I try to show everyone the utmost respect. Doesn't mean I got to like you, but <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But you know, I do my best to give you your space, let you talk your piece, I talk mine. And if you do it again, then I'm going to slap the shit out of you. <laughs> but thank you, D. That was pretty awesome. No, this definitely was great. And again, Theo, thank you so much for doing this. This was something that it, it was great that we got to do this. I'm glad we got to celebrate. We got to talk about all this. This was amazing. Like even the people in the chat, thank you guys so much for watching. Like even Ron Starr coming down in the chat now, another unk. Matt Austin, he's, oh geez, I just noticed his comment. Matt's asking if you're bringing the machete on Saturday. <laughs> Actually, I was thinking about it, yeah. Yeah, I was thinking about it. It's always in my bag. That's actually so. Let me just give a quick story. That machete that I carried at BWF, there was a lot of history to it. That machete was used between Homicide and Low Life Louie at JP back in '99. Um, they had a Christmas tree death match. And if I'm not mistaken, Homicide put the machete in Louie's mouth and tapped him out that way with the machete in his mouth. Um, but yeah, I've had that machete has a lot of history and. It's always in my bag, and you know, I always tell Louis I'm going to give it back to him the day that I'm out. That's when he knows I'm out. I'm going to hand him the knife back. But, um, yeah, that's definitely uh, – it's always with me, so it just might make an appearance. Well, there you go, guys. But, again, Theo, I don't want to take any more of your time here because we could go on for hours here. So, yeah, again, yeah. I just want to say thank you so much for doing this. Again, as the young kid, again, you said you were a kid from Brooklyn. I legit – we've had this combo before. I'm still growing up in the same area here. Like legit, we've talked about it. I think I'm a block away from where you guys used to be. So it's mm -hmm. to see what you've been able to do with seeing guys like you, Homicide, Loki, Moff, just what you guys have done and transcended and even more, it gives a kid like me that hope. And again, I've been lucky to be able to continue to do this in wrestling, doing the podcast game now. It's great to still be able to get that advice from you guys, have these conversations and just continue to learn. And this is still truly an honor. Again, I'm going to keep calling you a legend till, till the one day you lariat my head off, but I'm going to still do it. <laughs> so thank you so much, Theo. This is amazing. Love you, man. This is great. Thank you. So again, guys, this has been Respect the Craft, episode number eight. Again, go check out Titan Championship Wrestling this Saturday. Go watch Monster Among Men. Go follow them and go follow Theo Mack on Twitter as well. You're going to want to see the crazy stuff. Again, he's always posting his clips as well. Go check them out. And also you get to see the crazy like gaming setups once once in a while too because that arcade is – I'm still jealous about that. I, I'm looking at a <laughs> PS5 right now, but I'm jealous of that arcade. <laughs> I got I got the uh, Xbox Series S and I was like, oh, I'm just going to buy it because I'm, I'm waiting to get the PS5 until Gran Turismo comes out. 
Yeah. But I was like, let me check out the Xbox, right? Yeah. I love that thing. That thing is the best. Like, you get a, a Game Pass Ultimate with it, you straight. You know what yeah. I mean? You don't need nothing else. And yeah. uh, I've been loving that setup. Um, but when I get the uh, Ultimate setup, because, you know, right now, this place was just a place for me to stay at. I'm looking to get into a bigger house eventually. Uh, and when I create my steve room <laughs> where you can see the final form of my setup trust me i'll invite you over and uh, oh, i was gonna say that's it i'm, I'm that's that's gonna be it i'm, I'm gonna do what you what, can't uh... stay you gotta go home and not unless you pay rent if you pay rent then well you can hang out all you want <laughs> but <laughs> i was gonna say that's it i'm gonna pull a monkey and drastic and that's it i'm gonna be there all day hey, listen you know what's so funny there were so many times they would come over and they'd be like uh is your wife going to allow you allow us to play games? I'm like, she got no say. If we wake her up, we wake her up. <laughs> and that's why I'm divorced now. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, again, this was great. On that note, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for sticking it with us. Definitely go support Monster Mac this Saturday. Support all those guys. So again, it's going to be a great show. It's going to be a great vibe. And you're not going to want to miss it. And continue to support independent wrestling as a whole. As always, be wise, be genuine, be real, be better people, and respect the craft. We'll see you guys on the next one. Peace. Peace.